Thank you for joining in this Microsoft Intune training. I'm going to cover in depth Microsoft Intune training, and this is going to be seven parts, uh, different series. So, and I will be adding this entire series to a Microsoft Intune playlist. Um, that's going to be a bundle or Bible kind of thing for you to learn everything uh, with respect to the Intune. Trust me, I'm going to include everything here within this playlist, which is going to be called Intune training, definitely and uh, you could you know see the thumbnail of the training part one part two part three part four and finally part five so i'm going to cover everything here and that being said first we will begin with what exactly microsoft endpoint manager and uh, whatever the products that are included uh, we will begin with there i'm pretty sure that you all coming from SSM background already but still uh, as my responsibility i'll give you, you know some introduction like you know it has a five different components or five different technologies uh, within this family uh, of a product and what are those we will be you know learning later point uh, we'll focus on intune only uh, what are the capabilities of the intune and then we will move to how to create a lab and how to create the uh, sign up process for trial all of that stuff okay and the expected uh, within this today's session would be uh, we would be completing the introduction and also we will take this sign up uh, for intune so that we can uh, go and build our lab okay and also we might finish the windows enrollment process okay uh, if time allows we might go with the application deployment uh, also oh, i think you know your application deployment and the windows enrollment we would be you know, working on it later point in the tomorrow session we would be jumping into the complete android and the ios specific enrollment that's the agenda okay and coming back to the style of the teaching as i said earlier also we would actually learn purely cloud only first meaning you don't have any footprint on your on-premises network with the uh, Active Directory. So we just uh, go with only Azure AD uh, case. So in that case, you know how you can uh, enroll the devices and work on it. Okay, that would be the first step. And once we have done this, we will actually move to uh, on-premises where you might have your domain controller. I have a couple of uh, a couple of you know machines also created with the domain controller and SCCM also in this lab. So we would uh, we would actually work on the machines that are joining to the domain controller, how we can enroll these machines with the help of hybrid AD, and also how we can manage your on-premises environment without a CCM. The other part would be the, uh, with, uh, with the same scenario, like you have your domain controllers, and also you have your SCCM server, and uh, these machines uh, might be already reporting to SCCM uh, server as a SCCM client got installed and how you're going to manage these machines. Okay, so this is what we are going to uh, learn. So th in this part, uh, we can, you know, say as a co-management here. So we will be working with the uh, SCCM also. So this is the uh, complete course site. So of course, you know, we are going to touch up uh, autopilot, all other concepts definitely, which are there. But the style of the teaching would be we would focus on a cloud and then we move to the on-premises with only domain controller where you don't have a SCCM environment. And then we will later point will move with SCCM and Intune. So uh, I hope you know I gave the uh, what we can learn out of this session. So let me jump into the introduction. So uh, just you know, let you know that the Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Okay, this is a tool or this is a product uh, newly introduced in uh, 2019, uh, if I'm correctly remember. So what happened is within this product, the existing fee of the products has been merged. When I say merged, uh, it was actually uh, for example, if you take it to SCCM, this we call it as the configuration manager. Earlier we used to call it SCCM. So you know that why we call it SCCM. SCCM actually stands for uh, there's no direct word called SCCM to be frank as per Microsoft. But how, how we as a community as named as SCCM is it is actually part of system center family and the ending with the configuration manager. So if we just go to the Microsoft documentation also, you will see as a configuration manager only. So this configuration manager manager was part of a product family called system center so earlier system center it used to have uh, dpm 
and that's a data protection manager and virtualization manager and also your ops scom you know right the uh, operations manager so that's a different tools you used to have it okay so along with that you also have a configuration manager as the a separate tool so with this tool has been you know uh, come out of system center family and join to endpoint manager product family okay so earlier also microsoft intune used to be the uh, ideally a single solution uh, even this was initially how it was started is they started on a couple of uh, microsoft servers uh, with respect to a few uh, few regions later point they moved this to the merge to the azure infrastructure okay and later point uh, they completely so later point what they have done is they uh, completely uh, moved to the azure vault Okay, and now uh, that product also they have you know the UI all of that things has been changed and merged to another product called the Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Okay, and uh, there is another product called Desktop Analytics also. This is a new, not really new. If you ever work with the application compatibility toolkit or Windows Error Reporting, that's the same tool that has been moved to uh, cloud as a service. So that's now we call it as a DA. So within this DA, uh, this tool also can be managed from a endpoint manager. Now coming back to the co-management, it's like a co-management is uh, like you know I, I would put it in this way. So earlier when you have in tune to manage the mobile devices, we used to what we used to do is we used to go for a hybrid uh, configuration uh, for the device management capabilities. So with the integration of a system, so that has been completely taken out now. And what they have done is a machine if a single machine remember my friends a single machine has a two agents let's say one from a ccm client other one from a intune enrolled in that case uh, this machine can you know uh, work as a co-managed meaning two places it can be managed we are going to learn lay, uh, within this slide also because i'm not it given any of the introduction of these products i'm just giving a high level overview and later point we will jump into the in-depth of everything Okay, every of these five products. Okay, so just the you know one line uh, I'm trying to explain what is a co-management. So a machine has a uh, two agents and this can be managed with the help of a co-management technology. Okay, and uh, coming back to the autopilot, autopilot is uh, simple. Like you know when you try to when you try to install the operating system, you normally get it like a, a region and the language. And the keyboard options and all of this stuff right so these this is called oob actually that is called out of box experience okay so this oob experience can be automated at the same time the machine also can join to either azure ad or to your on-premises active directory so these steps can be fully automated meaning let's say if you're getting a device or you purchased a device from on-premises sorry from lenovo or dell or any other hardware vendor you would definitely what happens you would uh, you would get the similar uber experience right it's gonna ask you who's gonna use this computer what's the username what's the password what's the region time zone all kind of you know normal things it, it's gonna ask you so these things uh, which are coming from hardware vendor also can be automated with the help of autopilot we are going to learn in a minute on this also as an introduction so there are you know five different products just you know let you know that what we have learned so far is microsoft endpoint manager is a new product that has merged with five different either products i'm use i'm going to use a different word call now technology so as i said some of them are products some of them are technology so if you ask me uh, you know can you refer you know what is a technology yes my friend autopilot is a technology it's not a product meaning if you can you know script it this technology the way you wanted it can work for you let's see you have a wmi right so the way you wanted you can query to the wmi and get the information similarly the powershell right so one person might have a different um different methods you know query to get that so some other person have some other way to write the script and get it similarly that call a kind of you know technology or your skill right similarly autopilot also provides a technology for you to you know utilize 
okay so i use a word out of this uh, slide some of them are products some of them are technologies okay now let's understand uh, what we're going to learn within this course we are going to learn uh, out of these five products microsoft intune we are going to learn in depth and also part of configuration manager with respect to the co-management we are going to learn and uh, we're not going to learn about the uh, da or desktop analytics i can show you if you want some of the videos especially for the da it needs a lot of uh, time and a lot of machines to uh, process actual data to show you in a visualized way so i'm going to talk on what is de uh, within this uh, initially about the way we are going to use it so if, if you all are interested we will give a try on that but uh, mostly with the recordings okay because it takes a lot of time to get that and coming back to the windows order palette uh, and co-management we also gonna learn these things Okay, so if you ask me what we are not going to learn, I'm not going to teach you how to install the configuration manager, how to configure, how to install client, all of that stuff. Uh, but we are going to touch up the cloud attach uh, or the concepts that are related to the co-management or concepts that are needed to integrate with Intune. We are going to learn on that. Okay, we are going to learn about the Microsoft Intune. What exactly Microsoft Intune? So Microsoft Intune is this product is part of Endpoint Manager, right? And this product is completely a cloud based, which was built on a Microsoft Azure cloud. Okay, um, this is 100% a cloud based uh, software or service, uh, which gives you as the uh, some of the capabilities let's see you can manage the mobile devices when i say exactly what exactly the mobile devices when we refer as a mobile device so now these days the user is a center point when i say user is a center point he, the user can come up from a different devices it can be ios or it can be a mac device or it can be a google devices like a mobile phones or windows devices right so these devices to manage SCCM is not capable in, in a some certain extent so that's where microsoft intune can you know come in and it can address those issues that's why what microsoft has done is they released this product and they merged all of this for your information let's say you have a license with the configuration manager meaning you can free to use intune also Okay, some of the uh, users who have the Office 365 subscription, like E3 kind of, you know, different subscriptions, we will talk about the licensing later point. But if you if you talk about the Office 365 licensing, then you can also use the Intune uh, as the built-in feature. Okay, now I, I refer as a MDM or mobile device management, which refers to, it can address a lot of, a uh, lot of mobile management capabilities like for managing the devices different platforms okay and also i'm also referring here mobile application management so what exactly mobile application management let's say my friends you have a, a any any of the device let's say android or maybe ios device let's say within that you are going to your settings and you want to restrict uh, the mobile database uh, uh, data utilization so you might have some option there what if uh, within the settings you are looking for some option which is not available then you can actually reach the mobile vendor so in this case if it is a uh, google and right you can reach the google or if the manufacturer is coming from uh, coming from your samsung or maybe apple devices then you can reach them that's called the uh, vendor specific and then they would they would actually come up with some kind of you know uh, very similar to the xml configuration i don't say that's an xml configuration but they give you that option what what was missing in that you can contact or you can contact the forum uh, to get that information so what i wanted to say here is some features if you cannot uh, manage with the intune you can do uh, by writing a custom settings okay and that is possible so that's called you know we can uh, another way we can put it as an application uh, level management also can be done okay now you can also deploy the application let's say you can control the features what features to be enabled on those company devices so the device when we say device device is not own just you sometimes or not sometimes actually in the companies they buy the 
mobile devices and they offer the device to the user so that they are more productive so you can actually control some of the features on those devices uh, let's say copy paste can be uh, controlled not to you know copy the corporate data and paste it into maybe his facebook or his gmail id such things can be controlled and also enterprise uh, uh, you have the google enterprises and operating system i'm going to talk on that my friends you all know for now maybe as you have a google android as the operating system but when it comes to the management uh, how you're going to manage you're going to manage with operating system capabilities called google enterprise uh, for work okay google enterprise offering we can say so there is a different management options um, we can talk on that so i'm going to talk on that later point when we move to the android enterprise for this point of at uh, this point of time you can remember that android has different offerings or different management capabilities one can be done with the android enterprise offering also and 99 point uh, you know whatever the percentage you want to take it as a nines all of them will use Android Enterprise. They're not going to use the insecure method, which is called DA, uh, direct access uh, or device administration. We would put it right way would be the DA. So DA, we are not going to work on it. So you might be you know, confusing what it is. For now, leave it. Uh, it's just the Android you can manage. And also iOS, iPad. So for your information, if you're quite new to the Android, uh, Apple devices, uh, when you have an Apple device, uh, when I say Apple iPhone and also iPad both have a different operating system my friends We always referred as iOS, but uh, it has a different operating system iPads has iPad operating system called I iPad OS and iOS devices that are mobile phones or your Apple devices Apple phone phones have the iOS device and similarly the laptops that comes from Apple will consist of a Mac OS why I was talking this is if you don't know these things uh, again you cannot create the required profiles and configurations um, with uh, to manage these kind of you know, devices and you know the windows devices anyway so these things can be managed and uh, definitely you can pu uh, push the a different type of applications when i say application applications can be from a google play store or microsoft store or maybe ios store or maybe exes or maybe msis or you need to you know convert that standard applications to intune compatibility format okay we're going to talk on that but at the end you know if you ask me the future wise yes my friends with the help of Microsoft Intune, you can manage the mobile devices, you can manage the mobile application settings and device settings, and also you can manage iOS, iPad, Mac, and Windows devices, and also you can uh, manage the uh, these devices by integrating Azure Active Directory, meaning these devices actually uh, part of your Azure Active Directory, okay? Meaning the identity will be coming from Microsoft, Azure Active Directory. Okay, so that's a base. So that's why within this session we are going to learn. We are going to learn Azure Active Directory as a first step. Then only we will move to the N1 Manager or Intune. Okay, and uh, coming back to the uh, other uh, options, you can also, if you are part of ATP subscriptions, you can also manage the uh, ATP Defender. Uh, configurations on the mobile to secure and you have any of the group policies on your on-premises that can be configured on your devices and can be applied as a ADMX templates and we also talked about the uh, applications deployment for different configuration different types so i'm not going to talk what is win32 what is line of business application at this point of time this is not a right point you know talk but you have a multiple options to deploy like exes msis and you might have to convert that exes or msis to a certain standard which can understand by intune okay yes you can also push your scripts and that can be also converted to intune format we're going to talk on that deep drive okay and these things are uh, specific to the uh, by platform when i say platform like windows different ios or google it would be different okay and on top of all of these solutions you can actually apply something called a complaints policies so a complaints policy is a baseline okay which is very important uh, for any of the company you might you know think that your devices should have 
Saturn operating system build and the and the version uh, and also the antivirus some of the firewall settings some other settings that needs to be followed then only you are you can onboard that device to your a company and later point if is not falling in between those standards or that standards are not found you can stop the device uh, not to communicate with microsoft intune with the help of not just the intune it's not gonna uh, this is not the work of intune but as i said earlier this intune is depends on microsoft azure ed as the identity so azure ed has some option called conditional access so you can actually utilize the conditional access to you, you can put some kind of you know conditions here let's say if the this is not the future of intune this is a feature of azure active directory a user coming and if is part of some of the groups or some of the uh, cloud application is trying to access uh, from a non known location or it is not complained in the azure ad uh, I mean, it's not part of the Azure AD or not part of Intune, then you can actually block it, the access, or you can enforce some kind of you know conditions to be you know apply on that uh, user. So these things you can actually uh, configure with the help of conditional access. Okay, that's just the you know uh, some uh, some uh, how we can utilize the complaints is one example. So so other example would be the you can measure whether this user has a complaints or not okay and you can uh, also deploy the applications features and settings to your devices that's all about the intune introduction i'm not talking about the capabilities at this point of time i'm just giving you the introduction to the microsoft intune if somebody asks what is microsoft intune yes it's a cloud-based uh, mdm solution along with the applications can be managed features device controlling features are available okay so i hope that's clear now i'm going to move to the configuration manager with this with these five tools with these five tools you have a single console which i'm going to talk on this okay that's called the endpoint mm -hmm. management admin center so what microsoft is trying to push is uh, they're offering whatever they're offering within this microsoft endpoint manager they just wanted to have a single console so within this demo or within this uh, within this course content we also manage we also see the devices that are going to come up from SCCM. so when we attach the machines to uh, endpoint manager you're gonna get the devices uh, which are coming from SCCM, and that also can be viewed. You can run the uh, some kind of you know, configuration. You can deploy some applications. You can see the devices part of what collection. You can run the CMP vote. You can run some scripts on top of it. Like that, you can do it. So the statement partially is correct earlier. Now, now these the mobile device management capability is completely taken out from configuration manager and it's just moved to the intune uh, and they offered a new technology within this uh, co-management microsoft uh, for the configuration manager we're talking about the sccm okay so this sccm product is now part of uh, microsoft endpoint manager so in case if you if you own the sccm license you can feel free to you know use the intune license also from the licensing point of view so the use cases for the SCCM in this case, uh, just for the SCCM I'm talking about. So this is mostly focused on the on-premises uh, solution where you can manage your uh, desktops and servers, okay? Whereas Intune cannot manage the servers for your information. And uh, that's one of the drawback, uh, which is covered in the next few slides. Uh, some of them, uh, which, are, which can't be done with the Intune, okay? Now, uh, for SCCM, you can manage the desktops, servers, and the laptops, uh, and also this uh, within the SCCM, you can actually manage the devices over the internet with the help of uh, with the help of HTTPS communication, or you can go for the cloud distribution points or cloud management gateway options that you have, and also you can uh, configure. Uh, with the integration of the Intune, when you go with the in, uh, integration with the in, uh, SCCM and Intune, you can take the advantage of the cloud uh, because in the back end, Intune is completely built on Azure AD. 
right so within this uh, and on this identity platform you have other products also can be integrated let's see here microsoft defender and atp so you can take the next generation of uh, atp uh, ATP for the threat protection levels and you can you know configure that uh, to address the issues that are coming from on any of the devices it can be a mobile device or it can be on uh, Windows devices uh, with the for example these next ne when I say next a uh, generation of antivirus these uh, These products the normal antiviruses that does not stop your ransomware kind of you know uh, and uh, problems right so for that kind of no threats it's the next generation antivirus can do based on the behavior analysis in the back end uh, it can address such problems so that's where the most of the people are going these days with the microsoft defender hp and uh, this can be integrated with other cloud services also that's uh, that's a uh, utilization one business case when you go with the sccm plus intune uh, you can utilize these kind of you know features like atp and other cloud uh, services can be utilized and uh, you can deploy the applications to your mobile applications which cannot be done from a sccm and it can be done with the help of uh, Intune and you can do the software update management can be done with the help of Intune when you integrate uh, For those devices and operating system deployment is possible with the Configuration manager, but the if you want to go for autopilot uh, Definitely you can utilize uh, with the Intune in the back end uh, And you can utilize for the existing devices options can be done uh, and the same task sequence with the task sequence you can utilize and you can deploy the autopilot configuration also for the uh, with the help of SCCM. So these are the few other things and you can monitor your complaints. Uh, for example, earlier we used to use the device level con uh, complaints policies with the help of uh, SCCM. And now uh, you have a you, you can choose the option whether you want to use these uh, complaints policies either to be monitored from a uh, config mgr or from intune you have an option so you can use that uh, configuration so that's that's nothing but the co-management side you can enable these uh, complaints policies to be only monitored from sccm or from intune you can do that option with the help of uh, with the help of co-management capabilities so when you move some of the options that for example on a sccm uh, on a sccm let's say there is you are monitoring the complaints policies certain policies are not up to date and you want to block those devices not to access the emails or maybe the OneDrive, they we want to you know, disable that kind of you know options if a device is not complete. This option is not possible with the SCCM. So what you can do is when you move uh, these uh, configuration with the co-management capabilities, what you can do is you can actually enable uh, co-management and then move the complaints uh, specific workload to Intune. So this is one of the capabilities directly from Intune. Then what happens is when you move to the Intune, the only complaint specific capability workload, I used a word called now workload. So th there are you know, different workloads, meaning set of features that can be moved to only to the Intune or to SCCM the way you want it. So when you move the Intune, this complaints uh, policies, you can take the advantage in the back end uh, backend and simply you can block the access if the device is not compliant okay with the help of conditional access policies so what happened is here you're giving the uh, power for your on-premises sccm devices also the power uh, with the help of conditional access this is uh, one other advantage when you move to the uh, cloud or when you move to the intune with the help of co-management so when we say co-management here, so what happens is the device will have a two agents. One is from SCCM, okay, and the same device also gets enrolled into Azure AD, okay, and the, uh, from Azure AD, the machine when it is registered, uh, we would actually the machine will gets reported or enrolled into the endpoint manager. So you can also manage the workloads. You can set the configuration here let's say only 
complaints policies should go to Intune. You can set that. You can set that kind of you know configuration or patching should you know move to the uh, Intune. You can do that kind of you know, configuration with the help of co-management. Okay. So in other way, co-management is a bridge actually. It's a, a bridge uh, between your SCCM. Assessing capabilities and also Intune capabilities. So you started asking some of the questions that you know some some of the capabilities cannot be done from Intune uh, or some of them cannot be done from SCCM also definitely. For example, the operating system deployment, uh, the way you deploy now the power that you have cannot be done directly from Microsoft uh, Intune. From Intune, you have a good technology that is autopilot as a separate technology that also can be integrated into Intune, which we are going to talk it in a minute. But so that kind of you know options, uh, you might be in a lock, uh, you might be you no know, lagging here in a SCCM. Let's say you have a different uh, single task sequence which can deploy the operating systems on a multiple devices and these things uh, are not possible with Intune, but what is possible with Intune is it's possible uh, with the autopilot way method. So in that situation, uh, if you want to you know, take the advantage of the co-management and you just want to deploy this specific task sequence, example, the operating system deployment, you can do that uh, on this machine directly with the help of a system task sequence, the same task sequence, and you you can take the power of uh, cloud management gateway or your on-premises power and they can you can build it and the same machine also can be enrolled into Intune and then the patching is done from here and some some of the applications comes from Microsoft business for store uh, directly so you have an options directly uh, some some features definitely uh, are only possible with Intune for example Microsoft store this is also available with the, within the system, but lately introduced. But these options are already available within the Intune. Now you can take this power of Intune and you can configure. So I would say uh, the word would be you no. Know, you you can use as the uh, co-management is a bridge actually where you can utilize the power of your existing on uh, on-premises SCCM and also the Intune integration so that few of the workloads can be moved. And can be managed with a uh, combination of SCCM and Intune. So that's where you can utilize the uh, um, co management. So now, uh, desktop analytics. So I'll talk in desktop analytics in another way. Um, before we go into the desktop analytics, let's say you are trying to deploy operating system deployment, or, uh, or maybe you have some machines on an 1809 build and you wanted to upgrade to 1909 or maybe to other build let's say uh, 20 uh, 21 h1 or maybe you know 20 h2 example whatever the build you want to you know, migrate so how do you do so normally why we go from a build is basically microsoft has a sag that is the servicing uh, channel so this channel what happens is uh, every every 18 months or half half yearly microsoft actually releases uh, two builds uh, one could be let's say now the current naming convention is h1 and h2 that's a half yearly so first half and the second half the current naming standards uh, when we move you know further uh, we can learn but currently the naming format is h1 and h2 meaning it is year 21 is the year h1 the first half uh, i think you know may 10th was released the latest build uh, 21 h1 and you can expect uh, in the september somewhere in the h2 build example so oh, so these builds are valid uh, close to 18 months uh, so within this 18 months you must have to patch or upgrade to the next version of the build so this is one bigger project which will run on your on premises let's say you might have a device which is running on a older version of 1809 and this build is going to expire uh, example some xyz date so you must have to move to the next build let's say 1909 what if if you don't move so you're not going to receive the patches all of that stuff and this becomes as unsupported by microsoft meaning the application is also not compatible drivers also not compatible so it's a vulnerable uh, machine altogether so you must have to upgrade to the latest build for that what you do is currently on sccm with the help of sccm 
you would uh, use the servicing uh, channel within the SACM uh, servicing channel options or you might upgrade with the in place uh, upgrade options with the task sequence so what are the challenges with this is you never know what kind of applications are compatible or what kind of uh, drivers are compatible most of the cases drivers and the applications uh, we never know that you know when you move from 1809 to 1909 build you never know that these applications or these drivers might not be compatible so what you can do is uh, you might be picking up some machines randomly or you you think that you know blindly that hey i want to test on a 10 bills so give me one machine from an account section or give me one machine from some other build or you yourself creates a lab with the older build and install some applications and you test it finally you might you know encounter some drivers issues and you fix it and you moved it but when we move to the actual production uh one or other application might not be compatible or causing some issues so you come to know that hey this is uh, causing issue because i have not tested or i have not tested in a real scenario that is the use case of that specific application so such uh, scenarios you might be you know encounter in the real world cases so how you can address this with the help of da what you can do is it what happens is it actually gives the if you look at the current problem in this not the uh, deployment issues it's actually issue to identify the right test machine right so that's a problem uh, what what you have done is here you have picked manually some of the uh, machines later point you ask your business to give the some of the build machines and you pushed it it might be working on your machines as well as on the business machines but in a real world when you when it actually reaches to some other test users it might not be working fine because uh, we never analyzed uh, this could be a one of the real test case so to address these problems da which is a purely cloud based service very similar to intune it's a purely cloud based uh, solution meaning uh, uh, meaning what what how this works let's understand so what they do is they actually have a error reporting capabilities so you need to know send all the required data to microsoft cloud service and then uh, similarly this is your x company similarly y company also sends z company a b c different companies will send to all of them will send to here so they might be running on a different versions of build same application might be running and it might be crashing all that events will be you know, registered in the cloud based service which is a da in this case and then they can share some kind of insights to you saying that hey uh, this is not going to work uh, on this specific build this driver might not be compatible so it gives that kind of you know, information to you and based on that information it will say hey you you can actually uh, you can test these machines could be a proper test machines you can you know consider um, you, you can consider these test machines as the test pilot machines that's how it can suggest uh, what happens after suggest you can create on these machines a servicing channel meaning you have to do it for again from a SCCM console there is no change in the SCCM console that you are currently doing so it just helps you to identify the what is the right target machines getting me so if you ask me in one uh, one way what is the advantage of the da utilization da gives you two thing two three things like it gives you the drivers compatibility application compatibility hardware compatibility along with that it can identify the right audience so that you can create on those machines as a pilot test machines then you can deploy them the uh, you can deploy the latest build and it may or may not work you can you know troubleshoot on that but it helps you to find out the right test audience so that's where the da will be used okay and uh, technically uh, for da you need to have the azure subscription is needed okay and uh, backend it actually creates the uh, log analytic uh, 
workspace in the back end so that all the logs will be all the information would be you know streamed to that log analytic service for that you're not gonna charge unless if you aggressively charge aggressively if you configure some kind of a configuration you're gonna charge otherwise even though you have as your subscription you're not gonna charge so within this uh, you have the desktop analytics here okay I didn't configure here desktop analytics at this point of time this is where you can configure so once you have done this step one and two and three two if i'm correct so this is where you just have to you know give your as your subscription all of that later point from from the SCSM console you need to do some other configurations it does in the back end all of that analytics okay then uh, your configuration will be you know populated after 72 hours it takes you know more than 72 hours time to populate uh, that specific data saying mm -hmm. hey you know what you can uh, what are the applications are compatible what application might not be compatible and also it gives you a creating a pilot collections it will give you the pilot devices collections it can you know give you or it can suggest you a first test it here it might not work then you can test it in that uh, those machines and you can find out hey this application is really not going to work on this machine so we need to find out some other alternative way or keep those machines for some time on that specific build okay step one here configuration is uh, which i have just shown here from the portal you will do it so after once you're doing it here you actually get a specific uh, subscription id kind of thing you are going to get it so that would be a specific thing for you, for only your company okay and uh, based on that it's gonna uh, have the build and also you also have the desktop analytic specific client agent settings also needs to be configured to uh, send the diagnostic data information these data also you need to you know uh, send the telemetry data where uh, you need to you know work on this specific key and there is a something called a commercial ID so your uh, desktop analytic will be tied up with this uh, commercial ID so this is a unique ID will be available will be given to you when you configure this specific one here so here when you do this configuration or with your subscription it's going to give you a specific key for you okay once you get that key uh, then uh, all the data from your company the diagnostic data which is getting analyzed will be tagged with this commercial ID and it will send to you which is a confidential ID in fact um, and based on that analysis will be done and later point you are gonna get the uh, here the first step would be you are gonna get it here within the desktop analytics the machines will be populated post to this configuration and uh, that information will be populated after 72 hours uh, or it might take more time also maybe a week example uh, example that's but what Microsoft says is officially 72 hours okay so let's take a week time after that it will analyze and give you the full details of the information okay and then uh, based on that you get the you know this is not working this is not working all that stuff you know you come to know and once you you know create here the required specific plans actually it's going to populate it uh, within the da here okay but at the end if you ask as a ccm admin uh, am i deploying uh, or am i creating servicing plans uh in the desktop analytics no you're going to create the servicing plans where you used to do it earlier so the same the servicing options all of stuff will come here only but it will help you to identify the hardware applications and the build information you get the proper analytics will be done for you okay for desktop analytics you just needs the azure subscription okay that subscription also you are not going to charge you're not going to charge if you use a default configuration okay meaning it's almost free almost free this is almost free i would say okay this is almost free so i would recommend you know when you're trying with the da go for a dedicated uh, as you subscription as a pay as you go on your company pay uh, method and you're not going to charge for that Another one would be the autopilot. So coming back to the autopilot, so let's let's take current situation. What we are trying to do with the SCCM. So what we are trying to do is with the SCCM. Let's say Dell or HP, or maybe your 
hardware vendor who supplies the devices to you and what you're trying to do is currently you will be taking that machine which has already windows 10 maybe it might be a professional or you wanted to uh, convert to enterprise so what you're doing you're actually uh, doing the deployment on existing the newly given machine with the help of sccm you're doing the operating system deployment with all the uh, you with a custom golden image you're pushing that image and then applications within the task sequence customizations all of that stuff is running so here time and cost is involved uh, because if you look at these hardware vendors already shipping a device with the preloaded operating system so if there is an option to convert this operating system to usable case uh, and uh, with the your organization standards it would be good that's where the autopilot has uh, come up it's a technology meaning this autopilot can be integrated with a ccm or it can be integrated with microsoft store for business it can also integrated with intune okay so we're going to uh, look at the intune and SCCM options a little partially with the microsoft store for business options so <clears throat> let me show you how the autopilot will work uh, in an easy way we are going to uh, deeper drive this later point uh, the types of autopilot methods and all of that but just to give you what exactly autopilot so windows autopilot is a technology let's say you have a device uh, when you start this device as a freshly newly device which is coming from your OEM vendor or maybe you have done the reset of the device it will start asking for the regional keyboard uh, settings kind of you know things who's going to use this device the user so these things will be automated by Windows Autopilot with a technology uh, what it does is it actually connects to in the back into Azure AD and also to the Azure uh, AD along with the autopilot server in the back end and it will check for the hardware ID of this machine so there is a uh, spe machine specific hardware ID uh, will be there so that ID if it is matching okay within the autopilot uh, server then it will look for a profile there's something called a profile I'm going to talk on that later point so profile consists of what uh, kind of you know applications to be deployed what kind of uh, policies to be deployed all of that stuff will be there within that profile so it, it just comes to this device uh, after downloading that profile and then it will this machine gets jo joined to Azure AD first step as a first step to Azure AD and then it gets also enrolled into your MDM which is in this case uh, your Intune and then the required application will be pushed from your MDM required configurations will be pushed directly from the uh, MDM again when I say push this can be two methods one is before the user login other one would be the after the user login so that depends on the profile that we configure here in the autopilot but what is happening on this machine you're actually utilizing the uh, the machine directly from hardware vendor who shipped or maybe the uh, the reset machine you're utilizing without reformatting okay so this is the autopilot uh, in other way. So in this case, instead of uh, you actually get the hardware ID, your reseller or your hardware vendor can upload the hardware IDs uh, instead of you, or they can send the hardware IDs. Let's say you order 10,000 devices, the 10,000 devices uh, information will be sent to you. Okay, and you can upload to autopilot server, or in case if you grant the permissions to them, uh, they can also upload on behalf of you so that uh, the devices will be available later point you can assign these devices uh, to the required users or you can just upload and leave it so that any user who can you know want to utilize they can utilize uh, so the when they actually log in the applications will come from a Microsoft Intune after uh, after log on or you can do as I said, you know, there are two options. One would be the after logon, other one would be the uh, you can, you know, pre stage the applications or pre provision. We would say the right word would be the pre provision. So the applications will be already available. So when the user starts, uh, he gets the, all the applications. So this is a technology altogether uh, with the autopilot. Okay, so we have autopilot technology which we are going to cover on that.
So for this, uh, you can also do the life cycle of device management also with the help of autopilot. You can reprovision the device to the previous state. So you no need to redeploy. Just simply click on that so that user can redeploy it. When we learn the autopilot, uh, definitely the profile uh, option. So you have the authentication to be you no know, scaped, all of that stuff. Along with that, a ESP is the you know enrollment status page. We call it in a short ESP. If anybody doesn't know, uh, so here you have an option to you know block the user for a certain time and. Uh, so that user can if something goes wrong in maybe in a white law or pre provisioning method Then you can collect the logs and get that stuff uh, That configurations you can do it with ESP and ESPs can be you know created multiple things you can do that So these options will be uh, Learn later point Not now Okay so that's the overview of the of Windows Autopilot and coming back to the Windows Enterprise Admin Center. So this is the Admin Center is a tool which I just shown here. If you remember a couple of minutes back, this is a tool uh, Admin Center web portal. So from here you can manage the devices even uh, from a system. So single console at this point of time, we can say uh, here it is as the single console which can address your uh, configuration one-stop website as I said here, but uh, it's not fully uh, matured, but yes, it's still evolving. Uh, if you look at um, some of the devices, for example, here, uh, the config MGR, this device is actually coming from configuration manager, meaning there is no, uh, not this, maybe let's take another one, maybe this one. So if I take this, this is the domain controller. Um, and HYD DC01. This is a domain controller and you see here you can get the collections you get the Applications and you can you know do the same pivot scripts can be executed all of that stuff can be done uh, Directly from a single console. So Microsoft has its own vision to replace might be who knows uh, in a future to Replace the system console to do everything directly from single console but for now uh, Yes, you know, not everything can be cannot be done from a from this console, but you know things are changing So if you see here, these are the preview options Okay, so if a device is just the enrolled into Intune, I might not get it uh, the same options uh, within this console uh, These things like a collections all of that stuff, but this is in tune with the Windows seems to be Yeah, so single console that's what I wanted to see here to manage like whatever the five technologies we talked can be learned from the single console Okay And that's all about the introduction uh, For the five products. So let's uh, understand what is right for the business. So if we are uh, constantly deploying only um, you, you you have a lot of operating system deployments example then go for autopilot to you know build that technology and uh, It's a purely cloud-based technology. So you can automate the things uh, with the help of autopilot Okay uh, You have some kind of you know rules and you want to control them for your users your applications devices then go for Intune Okay, meaning more user centric go for in tune um, So you might be thinking you know what is best in this case? Uh, for cloud or on-premises or cloud plus on-premises. This is what we're going to learn So if you have everything cloud only then we would be you know going for the in tune instead of the SCCM That's the designing side uh, If you have on-premises only environment, there's nothing on the uh, cloud then you can go for only SCCM but what if if you have some of the devices with a mixed state then you can actually attach there's a new uh, technology or new options coming up from SCSIM to attach your cloud uh, to your SCSIM infrastructure can be attached to the cloud so that the way we have just shown here the devices can be uploaded directly from SCSIM console so if you just go to your SCSIM console now whatever the devices you have all these devices can be you know uploaded uh, to your Admin center and you can manage them straightforward and that's one other option that you have and Also, you can manage 
on those devices with the help of co-management capabilities uh, from SCSIM as well as from Intune point of view by moving the workloads. Okay, and you can also use the uh, desktop analytics features definitely. Okay, so that's the design point of view when when to use a cloud only architecture when to use the on-premises or cloud plus on-premises architecture. Okay, now if we look at the capabilities of Microsoft Intune, we did talk already few of them or most of them. Uh, this is a two uh, two page slide. So if we can go through, I mean, I'm, I'm not a guy who go with the slides definitely post to this. We will not see the slides. You might see only two times the slides one for the explanation for autopilot. Other one would be the Google app Google Android specific enrollment options later point. We are not going to look into the slides. This is just the introduction. So for the Intune capabilities, yes, it's a uh, Intune can manage as we talked about the devices and applications. You can push the um, configurations and applications for your iPhones or your your phone or phone devices or tablets or laptops. And also you can prevent access on those devices by configuring conditional access policies or application uh, production policies. That's a something in which we didn't talk about it, but to protect the corporate data we can apply the app protection policies and we can uh, prevent uh, configuring the users not to configure their personal applications or personal email IDs. We can prevent them. We can set some kind of rules on a personal or uh, personal devices so that uh, they all personal devices also follow some kind of you know standards so that they can be part of our company. Uh, enrolled applications can be utilized. Uh, for example, if the user is using a rooted device, we can you know block that persons. And also, we can enroll the devices um, that are coming from either Apple or maybe from a Android devices uh, as the company owned or organization owned, and we can set some kind of you know access levels on that. And you can uh, deploy the authentication applications uh, like MFA for some of the applications to be in you know, make it as a mandatory so that it can be protected uh, or we can set the application level passwords on that on your on your mobile devices for that specific applications with the help of app protection policies and you can measure the compliance information on those devices um, and you can get the inventory of those devices and all such things you can you know or get it like as I said you know jailbroken devices can be you know, blocked you can push the certificates you can push the Wi-Fi VPN profile configurations you can see the reports what devices are compliant what devices are not compliant and in case if the device could be Windows or could be uh, uh, any 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 by platform device if it was lost or stolen we can wipe the data we can uh, securely wipe only the corporate specific data also well, these things can be you know uh, do from Intune as a capabilities and you can apply the applications from a different stores to different devices uh, and different device groups you can do that users you can apply it and the configuration apps uh, you can set the applications uh, for a specific uh, configurations can be applied uh, configured on those applications reports can be pulled and uh, These are the copy paste can be you no know, uh, saving can be blocked for example uh, Maybe a device was personal owned device. Maybe the data getting back to iCloud Meaning the entire application that also gets backed up to the iCloud which that application is actually corporate application like Outlook so if you have any kind of you know regional level settings or you want to you know block that things not you know back up to iCloud you can do that similarly Google backup you can do such things and uh, uh, these are you know a couple of things that are uh, available uh, with the Intune capabilities okay hi friends so far I have in I have explained everything about the Microsoft Endpoint Manager and their products, the five products and their technologies, or whatever you call it, and their features, pros and cons, kind of thing, and the capabilities and how it looks like. Trust me, I 
I have uh, considered this is a more interactive session I thought you know uh, even though you are not in front of the computer I'm, I'm pretty much sure that you know you might have you know uh, like this course um, and it, it you felt that you know it is more interactive please do comment uh, if you have any further questions at this point of time, I'm happy to you know cover it up uh, by taking in new videos on that specific topic. I also, and also my only request to you, since you are getting benefit out of this video, I request you to you know please share in Facebook groups, whether wherever you have the Intune community, and share with your friends and your colleagues. That really helps them and also to me in other ways. Uh, and thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much sure that you know you all will help me out to you know boost because I have put a lot of efforts my friend to you know create this video so it's not just like you know uh, sitting in and creating it right I have to plan the content creation everything from a scratch and I'm gonna show you in depth the content trust me and this content is a completely premium content and I'm pretty much sure that you know you may not get it anywhere in the internet I'm gonna share you all that content with my all efforts I only request you to you know share and like that really helps me thank you and we will move to the Azure AD so before we move to Azure AD just wanted to tell you some secret super secret everybody knows uh, but it's a kind of you know known thing but you need to you know uh, you need to remember this in a different way altogether let's say I wanted to put it in this way Intune is actually a let's say Intune right this Intune will fit on top of one identity solution so in this case Azure AD so if there is no Azure AD there's no Intune another way another way let me put it in this way you have a device actually what happens is this device gets registered or enrolled uh, you uh, the right word would be the registered okay the right word would be the registered or join that's the right word not the enrolled okay so either you are registering or you are joining in azure ad this device okay so this device is joining into Azure AD. So if a device was not joined to Azure AD, can I have Intune agent or Intune capabilities? Definitely no. Because the backend is everything is Azure AD. Okay, so what happens within Azure AD? There is a uh, MDM capabilities uh, feature. Okay, so if a machine is joined or if a machine is uh, registered, do you want to you know, uh, shift that capabilities to what what uh, MDM service provider? So in this case, maybe a third party also. Okay, that's called coexistence. So we man we we, we talked about the co-management. Coexistence is uh, another thing. If you're you know talking about non-intune product, then coexistence we can call. It, okay, that's another uh, word we can use. So but the management of MD MDM can be set to either Intune or something else. Okay, so just wanted to tell you even still the Microsoft documentation is uh, refers to the older method. That's why when you actually configure in the olden days, I'm talking the olden days, the when the Microsoft Endpoint Manager product was not there, we used to actually configure or we used to set the uh, MDM authority. We used to call MDM authority to either Microsoft Intune or to the uh, a season with the hybrid configuration which was uh, if you remember you know I used 2000 early 2008 or 2016 somewhere you know they used to use this kind of you know uh, MDM authorities now it still shows as the Microsoft Intune but in the documentation you do this change that change. but no if you just go to the device management capabilities within the here the it, it actually configures sometimes if you see here I think you're not able to see this let me uh, show you here this MDM uh, MDM capabilities sometimes it is shifting to Intune some of them are system center configuration manager still even though uh, this is nothing but the nothing but the config MGR or SCCM right so you have this uh, this capability so what happens is with this uh, this is authority to tell that hey you are gonna uh, take the lead that's what it is trying to say 
okay are you are going to manage who's going to manage is managing by in this case in tune so earlier it used to be hybrid all of that stuff it's just the now in tune but what i was trying to explain is the first thing uh, as you read the device or whatever the device it can be ios device or ipad or iphone google android device or windows device first part first thing is it should come here to azure ad then the mdm part so if it is not com coming to azure ad there's nothing in the mdm okay so i also talked about in the mdm sometimes we'll see here as an intune sometimes we see as a sccm sometimes uh, some other uh, vendors uh, name also that's called coexistence so in this case uh, when you see as the Intune, meaning uh, you can manage that specific device from the endpoint manager admin center. Okay, so this is the secret that I wanted to share or uh, keeping this uh, this in in your view so that when we are trying to compare any of the troubleshooting point of view, then it would be easy. Let's say if a device is not getting enrolled into Intune, if somebody says first we need to look at whether this device is joined to Azure AD or not. If it is joined, there's no problem for you. Okay, so let's actually understand what is uh, Azure AD and uh, tenant methods. Then we'll go for the sign up. See what happens is uh, in in any company, if you have already Microsoft Office 365, meaning uh, you have already Azure AD in other way. Okay, and you might be you, 99 percentage. You might also getting if you have on premises environment. Active Directory and also you have Office 365 meaning you are actually running in a uh, AD connect tool also you might be using the tool which used to sync your on-premises objects to cloud Okay, we are going to talk on that all of that stuff. Let's focus on the the first part with the tenant So what is Azure AD? Uh, in this case Azure AD is like, you know, they first created a I'm, I'm using you know some uh, rough examples Sometimes I might be wrong, but just wanted to make the concept to be clear to you. That's it. Okay Let's say Microsoft has made a first domain call on Microsoft.com example So the thing that this is could be apartment. So this entire apartment name is on Microsoft.com Let's say you bought some tenant as a company or some other company also bought some other flat so within this flat you can have your own uh, you know family similarly the identities users groups and devices can be there i'm just taking one different example let's say there is an apartment and within that apartment you are trying to uh, buy a uh, buy a uh, flat so that's called a tenant i can call in my view i can call as its tenant so what you can do within this tenant is you can have your own users you can have user user groups you can have your uh, devices you can have your own applications licensing you can have your custom name of your domain meaning let's say uh, let's let's take one example here i have a company called ibm example so what ibm does is example uh, within this on microsoft.com they can purchase a flat and they can rename as ibm example ibm dot on microsoft.com that's what they got it so this is an ibm whatever they get it it's a unique thing they, they, another person cannot get same as ibm okay they might go and end up with ibm one okay or ibm two in this case so uh, let's say in this IBM, okay, uh, they can have the users, groups, and devices. That's good. But how the user looks like? The user one, for example, user one at the rate IBM, that's an IBM name, dot on Microsoft is the name will come on Microsoft.com. So the user uh, in reality, if we look at it, if we go back to the real world use case, no user will have a user one at the rate ibm or company name dot on microsoft.com they will have username at the rate company name dot com how this happens is this uh, this entire tenant name we call it right we we told the ibm dot on microsoft.com we call it as a tenant right this tenant will be mapped to a custom domain to your company name so in this case ibm they can map to this domain name <laughs> Okay, so once they have done the user will log in with username at the rate ipm.com example like that you can map to whatever the company 
uh, name or complete domain name is there so this name will be a public uh, dns so meaning you need to know go and verify your public dns within the uh, within the dns a public dns so that the records will be validated later point the this domain will be applicable for you and you can freely use for any, anywhere within the azure ad okay so let's say uh how can i uh and again you know this azure ad also have a different licensing concept my friend uh one is a free uh, way you can use if i'm correctly remember uh, around you know five lakh uh, objects can be used uh, for free but again applications are you know lesser all of that st stuff will come definitely you know people not go for the free but we can go even for free also you also have a p1 and P2 licenses, P1, P2 are the advanced level. So if it is six dollar, this is nine dollar kind of thing. You know, uh, I mean the pricing will be you know differ around you know, uh, uh, pricing will be differ I would say, but it's not exactly six or nine. You can you know check the Azure pricing calculator, um, but there is a different licenses so that the, when when you use that licensing, you have a uh, additional features that can be utilized for uh for that users okay if you ask me you know one example for p1 to p2 uh, case as i said earlier conditional access uh, you cannot use a conditional access with a default intune license let's say you have an intune license as i said earlier this user uh, if he's coming up from a unknown location or the device is not compliant uh, we said we wanted to block this right this can't be possible with the Intune license. You need to end up with additional license, either P1 or P2 license. So you need to you know have additional license also. That's why, as I said earlier, also uh, Intune is on top of your Azure ED. So P1 or P2. Similarly, if a person is coming up from uh, Korea and then immediately from Afghanistan or some other area, uh, some other region altogether, maybe within the two hour span. Technically, if it is not possible, I mean, uh, logically, it is not possible to travel or unknown location. If he's coming, you want to you know, block it or you want to consider that user as a risky, such kind of things. Also, the uh, privileged identity management, let's say every user is a normal user, but they wanted to have, they can request as a global admin rights. I hope everybody knows the global admin. Otherwise, I'll tell you that's a super user or super admin permissions. A global admin is a super admin who has a full permissions but this user is a normal user but he wants to become as a global admin during maybe uh, 1 pm to 2 pm between uh, he can request in advance or he can request then and there and it might be you know automatically approved based on his requirement and this kind of things are possible with the privileged identity management which is available only on a p2 license Okay, that's called PIM, we call it. So additional level of uh, AD features that you have. Okay, but let's say if I want to you know, create uh, a new tenant, how would I do is you have an option. If you're trying to, uh, if you're trying to get the trial, okay, so you have an option, just go to the uh, enterprise mobile, uh, mobility security so this is in uh, before i just go here i think you know i should show uh in tune licenses okay if i just go to this microsoft document so as i said earlier intune is part of different licensing so it can be part of uh here e5 e3 that is microsoft meaning you also have the windows license windows 10 license office license and an intune license okay so here you also have the uh, F1, F3, there's a government, G5, G3. There are different things. If you notice somewhere, Intune Education also there. Uh, actually, Intune was so popular for schools and universities in US and Europe. Uh, if you go to at least 10 colleges, at least eight of them are already provisioned with Intune uh, by using the Intune for education license they are using, which uh, for students they offer uh, in India, it's not the case, but in students uh, in a different university, they offer the laptops or the devices also from a university. It covers in their fee and also the devices are fully managed with the help of Intune. Um, and it also covers that Microsoft student license for education and that can be fully managed with the Intune. So the, how, 
console all of that stuff remains the same almost uh, we're not going to talk on that but you can find this information if i just go to uh, if i correctly remember uh, somewhere here you have the option yeah engine for education uh, from the admin center you can go here to you know manage that stuff okay so coming back to the licensing as i said earlier uh, the licenses are available on these licenses so your company or your project includes any of these licenses it covers you should actually look at on a user based or on a tenant based let's say if you want to know no more licensing just go to azure ad this is the right place if you're a ad guy if you're an office uh, a microsoft office guy then it's not the right place there is another place for office 365 guys but for ad guys just go to the licenses here and see you have all the licenses all products so within this all products you have whatever the licenses let's say uh, if i'm talking about the license for ems if i this tells about who has a license and uh, what kind of you know, licenses were assigned on that so let's say if i pick up one user example yeah let's see so you have here assignment options like p1 p2 and also microsoft in tune so so i have actually prepared a small slide uh, how the lab can be created in case if you want to practice this is the lab setup like you can first thing is you need to know get the trial so as i said earlier the licensing is available in a multiple methods right multiple uh, options you have to get the license so i would recommend you to you know go with the ems license because it also covers the p2 license and the p1 license along with that uh, this ems will offer you 90 days 90 days free meaning 90 days it can you know work for even in tune also that's a great thing and the post to that also you can extend in you know, some other ways there are multiple ways to you know extend okay now uh, other point would be the once you have the trial you, you can it's better to if you have one of the windows uh, vm or any any machine that would be great so what we do is one vm for cloud only environment one for on premises so when we move to the on premises the same machine or another machine we can you know reuse it if you have a lack of machines you need to have at least one domain controller with the sccm client so when we move to the on premises environment and when we move to this is for the by platform i'm just trying to explain for windows uh, this is more than enough or uh, at least these machines are needed if you have android devices you can actually use all the configurations uh, android specific and also if you have apple devices this is welcome so that you can test it on these things so this is a normal lab uh, these devices are needed so in my my way i do not have few devices my friends i don't have a mac if you are still interested in a mac i have a, a recording which i have done on mac machine i can show you that uh that's it and remaining things are fine but the enrollment side uh, either this or this is fine for us to you know have a look on it because almost the same you get the same experience okay but i have the devices to test it so coming back to the trial we talked about the ems trial you just enter here ems uh, if i trial here there's an option with the sign up will be there okay one second okay. yeah. so I have already signed in so that's not a problem it will go so you can actually go to EMS portal trial sorry I have uh, this problem will come always for me because I will be already logged in state in your case you might not have this problem so if you just you know go to the EMS page you have an option to free trial Okay, how did event is I simply enter uh, Enterprise Mobility Plus Security EFI trial. Then the first link, I got it here. 
so i've taken out this so this is where the free trial is available so you can click on this and fill the fill this information with your proper email id so you might you know ask me whether this is uh, uh this is the give me a second uh, the, here you can give the personal email id also here what happens is you just have to give any of the email id no need to go for your company email id you can give in a personal email id and uh, enter for example this is not my email id this is disposable email id which i'm using so mm -hmm. set up an account it's going to create uh, the account for you and later point it's going to validate the uh, your phone number also let's say this is my test i'm just wantedly entering here test so you just wanted to so if you see here first name and last name i give in a different way and the plus nine one verification card i'll just verify some code here mm -hmm. and then here it is asking for the tenant name so if you notice uh why why this is coming up here let's say if your company you you in your case if you have already a company you might have already a tenant so on that tenant we will take the licenses and we will purchase but in our case if we are uh, trying to do some kind of you know lab uh, we need to first start with the tenant right so here whatever the name you're going to give that becomes your tenant name so in this case, let's say if I give here uh, example, there's a company called Logitech example. So if I just give here, by default, this company might be taken by the real company, maybe. Why, okay. uh, uh, if you think about, you know, if you have already on-premises Active Directory and Office 365, meaning your company have already having this tenant. So we just simply, you know, use that. So here I'm going to give here uh, in tune demo example one two three four five example thing. This is available. Into demo one two three four is available. Okay. So simply click on next. Okay. Confirm and then it becomes as your uh, tenant. Okay. This is how you can create it. So whoever has already created here tenant, they can simply go to um, either portal.su.com simply they will uh, redirect to very similar to this page okay when you go to the portal.su.com you will get like this okay so this this is a page where you can take the sign up okay to get the sign up you can simply go and type the uh, ems plus security e fi trial and then this page opens click on free trial then you can get the trial can be enabled from here once you enable this uh, you have given these details and then phone number and with your email id then it it got it gives you know some kind of you know information like you know this is your first use and all of that stuff simply in a browser you can enter here as portal.su.com that will ask you to you know sign in or if you have already just now you signed up so it won't even ask for this kind of you know user id also close to that what we'll do we will uh, come to this page, okay? So once we come back to this stage, uh, here I can go back to Active Directory, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to create a users in groups. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, uh, do not think that, you know, he's gonna teach you, and, uh, I'm, I'm teaching, you know, very basic things, but it's, it's, it's also important because uh, when we go back to, I'm actually uh, going to, show a few basic things don't uh, take me in other way because these basic things are also important when you go for the autopilot so the first thing uh, the basic things what we are going to discuss in the next few minutes we're going to discuss about the user user creation groups and adding a custom domain and uh, also customizing your logon page for azure active directory 
so that's the customizations also will be doing it these are the things that you don't do it actually it will be done by your azure ad guys but in your company if you are the one uh, you may have to do it uh, but it's not uh, mandatory but these things uh, are important in case if you're trying to do the autopilot uh, these things are one of the you know pre requirement also that's why we wanted to you know do it in a, a proper way like you know a normal company how it looks like how we set it up from scratch we are doing that okay so once we have all these uh, tenant is created let's first create a user account i wanted to have a user account called az admin so if you see here in my case this is my first account i really don't know what is this user account password that's why i'm actually creating another user account okay called uh az admin okay and this guy name is az admin let it generate uh, united states so again my friends when you are trying to create uh, any of the user accounts make sure that the user's location is selected okay this is a basic thing that uh, is uh, mandatory if you don't select user's location you cannot even assign the licenses so meaning that user account cannot be used for accessing something else because you don't have a licenses right so you need to have the proper uh, uses location okay so in my case az admin at a very lengthy name called uh, how the user have to log in intune demo 1234 dot on microsoft.com that's how he's gonna log in and he's gonna set some kind of a password so if you want to see it you can see that password uh for time being i'm gonna set that password uh later point changed so create it just created okay and I can assign some of the Azure AD roles for this user. So this is a normal user account at this point of time. I can assign him as the global admin. Okay, so let me take the user ID here and uh, I'm poor in remembering the password. So I'll save it sometime. So if I just go to the assigned roles, this user is a normal user account. So this is again a role by a role based access site. Um, you don't need to do these steps, but just trying to explain how we assign the user specific roles in Active Directory as your Active Directory. Simply click on ID and you can search for the global admin uh, and that global admin have the full permissions on this tenant. So I'll just give us the global admin. OK, so it will be assigned in a minute or so for this user. A role and also for the licensing you can apply a licensing by going to the user properties sign there's no licenses if you see because we have not taken any trial but in your case you can actually assign because you have already signed up here right so during the sign up process it will assign this ems license but in my case i don't have license so how would i assign i would actually go to the licenses and uh, all products and then here i get a try or buy right so i'll when i click on a try or buy i get an option here for one would be the ems5 other one would be the only p2 license so in my case i just wanted to include ems so i'll just click on activate so this license gets activated on my tenant it takes some time uh, once it is done i can go back to the user account that we have just created and assign that user a specific license so this licensing assigning would take anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes time in the back end when you first time take the subscription so let's try our luck assignments so still it's not available so that's fine we'll we'll ignore for now uh, for a few more minutes and let's try for roles yeah if you see here it's already assigned the global admin now similarly license also will come in another few more minutes 
clear so the account which we have just created i'm going to use it okay is the admin and the password that was given for me in fact i have already changed this password also just for your information Okay, now I have a full rights on this. So I'm, I will be using throughout this class, maybe for some time, AZ admin account. Okay, so we know how to create the user accounts, right? So it's very simple and assigning the licensing can be done directly. Go to that specific user. In this case, for example, AZ admin. I can go to the licenses and assign this license if you see here in the drop down i have a multiple licenses so what i can do is for example for a specific user i don't want to assign assign maybe p2 license because i wanted to assign this p2 license for someone somebody else maybe because it's a costly thing so you can you know take out the checkbox also if you want in our case it's a free anyway so we are using full licensing clear so now we know the user creation and user license assigning if you ask me what is the best way to assign the licenses you always assign for the groups not for the user level okay so what happens is if you assign at the group level it will be come as an inheritance for that user okay so let's create a user creation so coming back to the user creation there are um, if you just ignore the office 365 specific but a normal user creation is sorry normal group creation side you have a few options my friends uh, this is also important uh, in this case so for example all i'm giving here a group name called all intune users example this is a group name this is going to be a group description okay and this is actually for uh, as i said earlier uh, pim specific uh, privileged identity management specific so when you are actually working with the active directory as your as your active directory privileged identity management you would be using this option as yes Okay, but we are not working with the PIM at this point of time. So we will go with the no. When you choose actually no, which is a default setting, you actually get it here a few options. If anybody is a quite new, uh, this is a tricky part. If you are a fan of SCCM collections, this, this is what uh, in uh, endpoint manager, you don't have a collections. Okay, but how do you manage the device? This purely based on the groups. Okay, uh, that too within the groups. If you see group membership, you have a type called assigned, meaning uh, one to one. Let's say I have a user called Paddy, and this a specific user I wanted to be a member of this security group called All Intent Users. This becomes as a static assigned. There's another group called dynamic users. What exactly is dynamic users? Dynamic users are, uh, let's say, if a matching value is there for this specific uh, region example if a person is coming from mumbai example and his location was mentioned as a mumbai now i can create a group called a mumbai uh, all mumbai users dynamically and if that description or if that specific attribute is matching then the user will automatically part of this dynamic user group same thing goes for the device groups let's see there is a category of uh, category for example bring your own devices so if a user is coming from bring your own device concept all of them can be a part of this dynamic user group right so you have a multiple options for dynamic why i was talking is this is very important when you go for the autopilot you also have the dynamic uh, group or dynamic device groups should be you no know, created so for now we are going with the static we will you know work on the dynamic in the next next two three minutes okay so let me clear the screen so i'll be selecting assigned and i can choose the member let's say i have a user here uh, then i can assign that specific user unfortunately i don't have any user now other than myself so i'll add later point okay that user so let's say create the group was created let's create one more group this time a dynamic group so i'm going to show you the dynamic group if you just choose here 
dynamic device you have a, you have to build very similar to SCCM collections queries you have a query method that can be built so here the properties are available default properties you can choose let's see uh, display name or object id operating system a device category a manufacturer model so based on this organization unit so based on this here you have operators almost all the operators you have like equals not equals contains all of that and then you can give that value so that it actually uh, for example i'm just randomly taking uh, this abc example so what happens is here the rule gets created so this can be automatically in case if you have already built-in syntax you can come here add or change here whatever the query you want to change and then you can create a group also clear so that's how you you're going to create the groups okay let's create one more user account called uh, chris okay this is the first account which i'm going to create so chris is the user account i wanted to create okay and uh, let's say whatever the password he is there is showing the password create a user you know what i have the, done the mistake can anybody say no i've done some mistake can anybody guess it what is the mistake they have done yes exactly user location i didn't mention while creating this user account right uh, if you want to you know, do it later point you can just go to the edit and look at here users location do mention this what if if i don't mention let me simulate this problem also uh, let's go to the Chris and try to assign the licenses. Okay, so this user applying license, then immediately I got an error that says that license cannot be assigned because user's location was not specified. We thought so very important that step. So let's do the quickly. Yep, edit uses location so i can choose whatever the country or region i want this information is very important because of the compliance policy so uh, this is a kind of a metadata kind of information which will be a uh, region specific so the information will not cross that region since i have taken us it stays in us region only even though user coming to access here the specific data will be within that uh, geo location uh, so we just created user and called Chris, right? How Chris can log in now, my friend? Chris has to log in with lengthy name called Chris at the rate, uh, in tune demo one two three, all of that stuff, right? Which is doesn't looks good. So how can I uh, customize? Definitely, I need to you know add the domain name. Before that, well, let's try with uh, portal dot azure.com or you go to any any of the cloud service uh, the user can be logged in i think this is a user and try to use a password so for the first time the user have to change the password so i'm just changing the password also So the user able to log in if I give the username called fully lengthy one, right? So let's customize to a company name. Okay. So how do we come? Uh, how do we uh, add is uh, now I'm trying to map this name for my tenant because currently the primary domain also this. So this to our company name. So I'll just go here, custom domains. You see here, this is my domain let's say i own a company called ibm example i'm part of ibm example let's say ibm.com if i just try to add it doesn't mean that you know the user can log in with a username at the rate ibm.com because if i just add what happens is it says that you need to validate with these records in your godaddy okay so in my case okay in my case i don't own uh, any kind of uh, domain name called ibm right so i just deleted that now i have a domain name custom domain name i'm going to map it okay called len in my lab.com this domain i bought it from godaddy or namecheap or whatever the public uh, domain uh, domain names whoever sells there i bought it and there i need to create now these records also 
right? Then this uh, can be actually validated. So here again, creation of these records also, you have a two options here, my friends. One is either you create TXT record or you can create the MX record, any of the record that to be created, just to you know validation purpose. So I'm, I'm actually creating in the back end uh, on my GoDaddy, okay? Uh, on a GoDaddy, I can create a record called TXT record, okay, with a with this value. So I'll just give here. In case if you don't have a, a um, proper domain name, can I still uh, do this stuff? Yes, my friends, you can do it. Uh, it doesn't mean that you know you're not uh, stopped at this point of time. You can do all the steps that are uh, that are needed. Uh, so only thing is here, if I verify, for example, after doing this, I can actually check here if you're technically, if you ask me, you know, what happens is there's something called a DNS propagation. So once, as soon as I create a record in my public DNS, the same record should be available everywhere. So in our case, we just created. In the back end, I just created a record just now uh, for a company called uh, learn in my lab.com. This is my domain name. So what is the record I've created? TXT. That's what, right? So I'm, I'm seeing that, you know, TXT record created. Let's see if that is actually replicated. If you see here, almost it's re replicated except New Zealand and some parts of, you know, uh, South Asia uh, here. But it is almost replicated. This t takes record. Let's see the value. What is the value? If you see here, it's just now. You know, Singapore also replicated. New Zealand got uh, replicated as we talk here. So the value is MS57, whatever 122. So this is the value, right? That's the value I just created in my public domain. And if I just click on verify, what should happen? At least the 90, 99 percentage, it is already replicated here. DNS is propagated, meaning I should get verified so click on verify so now it says that this is verified but my friends here this is a domain name which was marked as a primary meaning if i try to create a user account the username for example chris uh, chris at the rate uh, into demo one two three four dot on microsoft.com that's how it is coming now i don't want that because now i have already verified my domain name publicly also Within Microsoft Azure Cloud, so now I want this to happen. So for that, I need to you know take this checkbox to come as a primary here. To do that, post to this, you can have an option here, or you can do it later point also. Okay, it's up to you. So in my case, I'm just doing this. So what happens is this tick mark will change to up. It just changed it. That's it. Okay, you can close this uh, wizard, whatever you're trying to do. Now, if I go back again to my users and try to create this time a user icon called Bob example or if you, if you see here it has automatically changed to learn in my lab.com it doesn't mean that you don't have a, a other one you also have other one okay but the primary one is become as this why because we set it there okay let's say I can create another user here Bob example So now we just created called Bob. So now we are just creating a Bob account. So let's actually add this user user's location properly. So create. So Bob got created and uh, we can assign the license also from here. So now what we have done so far, we have uh, verified our domain, okay, uh, with our uh, tenant name properly, uh, called leninmylab.com, and we created a couple of users, a group also we have created, and we can see that the license is P2. And now as a next step, uh, we need to customize. Let's say if I try to log in, if you notice earlier, uh, or maybe I can give it a try one more time. Put not. Oh. 
here if I put it like a uh, Chris at then in my lab.com do you think it will work or not it doesn't because if you remember we created the user account but we didn't change the UPN so Chris is still trying to point to this one we don't want that that actually should go to you should be able to log in exactly so okay it should be tick mark click okay now if i try to sign up here this time okay i'll just have to refresh the page just we have done right so it is actually changing but now what we're going to try to do is we are trying to customize this background okay any kind of hint all of that stuff we wanted to customize for our company specific okay so let's do that uh, as as your ad guy not your job but uh it's good to have so let's do that so if i just go to azure ad i have a company branding okay so i can configure here a uh, branding if you see here there's nothing was configured uh click on configure um definitely you know as your company uh, you need to go and check with the approved photographs like jpg or png whatever the format all these logos all of that stuff but in my case i have already have but i'm going to explain where we are going to use and what we are going to use so this is a background image so on and when i try to log in here this is a blue color is there right the blue color i wanted to change to something else for that i need to have this resolution and the size uh, file size should be this with a png format or jpg so in my case i'm just browsing i have these files already uh i will be using these yeah logos so if i just go to the logos this is my background page if you see here i just named as 1920 into 1080 so this is the one uh the background and this is a banner logo banner is my company logo again so our company logo will come up here Let's see company logo in my case this is the logo and hint you can you know choose if you want to know any kind of hint for the users and these are other what is this this is uh square logo square logo is this i can choose and dark theme also i'm going to use the same thing so what all this is like you know this is for the dark theme if a user is using coming from a dark theme this will be loaded and this is for the logo that is going to appear and uh, this also show option in remain sign in that's a kim c is a, another protocol um, keep me sign in that's called kim c uh, in short a keep me sign in option also you can choose this by doing this a cookie will be you know, dropped so that the user gets a checkbox so when he take that it will be staying there if you want to you know, give some kind of you know if you have a multiple companies uh, within uh, within the parent company you can give here some kind of a you know, user hint name like you know uh, chris at your company name like you know you may have a company a and company b so you can give some kind of you know, hint kind of thing for example learn in my uh, lab.com like this instead of that maybe you know user name or maybe employee name employee id whatever you know you want to give the uh, hint so sample text also will be given here like um, example patty at like this that's it uh, and then uh, once you have this information save it so remember my friends if you see here at this point of time there's nothing um, once you save this this becomes as the first one you can create like this for multiple logon background page information for multiple regions um, that's a tricky thing uh, for user coming from a germany so the german background german language the user hint all of that stuff will come based on the region that would be taken care by automatically as you're aiding okay but this is a you know default now you can choose another language drop down and based on that you can create it but in our case i'm not going to do that all okay now the same user uh, 
this user, if I just close and come back uh, to access the page. So now background is coming up. Okay, and here my text is coming, which I have given as a party on the background with my company logo, all that is coming up. Looks good. Okay, let's move to uh, this configuration is done. So meaning we have learned very little basics that are needed to the uh, Azure Active Directory. I wanted to take this opportunity also tell about some super secret within Azure Active Directory. Okay, uh, this might not be applicable, but just wanted to tell you if you talk about Azure AD, uh, maybe you're trying to you know use some kind of on-premises Active Directory or somewhere some resources that needs to be integrated with Azure AD or maybe to Azure Cloud. So in the back end, what happens is within the Azure AD, uh, this is Azure AD, right? So within this, there's something called applications. So you see here, enterprise applications. So within this enterprise application, one web application gets created in the back end. So how Microsoft is, I'm not saying Microsoft is making full, but the technology behind it is, it actually creates some application here. And on top of that application, they grant the permissions, they do the integration, and your uh, clients will communicate with that application by using this user ID and the password that is there within this Azure AD. Why I'm talking all of this stuff is just wanted to tell you that uh, in when you compare with your on-premises Active Directory, we never actually uh, had any kind of applications uh, which are there on which are purely on from an AD point of view. Let's say you might have a mem member server with IAS and that might be a front end uh, for your web application. But there is no way AD was involved other than the identity specific. Okay, but here uh, the applications itself getting registered within the Azure AD and the clients uh, will have a mechanism to communicate with this application. So you will you know, come to know, you know when we do the either if you do the uh, cloud management gateway, how the client is communicating is or maybe cloud DP, all these concepts actually uh, involved with the applications. So you see here a lot of applications are there within this. If I just go here, Office 365 works in the same way, uh, Dynamics, many things, you know, what not, you know, miss most of the things will actually work based on that. Okay, some of application works with the application proxies like connecting for from your on premises to here also would happen from here. So either way, uh, that's just you know, just to you know, let you know that within the Azure AD you have within Azure AD you also have applications. So the client will get you know communicate always try to with the enterprise applications in the back end it will be used if you ever configure either cloud management gateway or cloud attach or any of the concepts within the SCCM, you would be you know, creating an application first step and then it will proceed further, right? The application actually comes here under this and your SCCM server will communicate with this application and it does that functionality with you, within that SCCM binaries or within that functionality code and it communicates and it makes that uh, uh, feature is available to you. That's how it's going to work. Okay, and now I hope that is a very basic which I wanted to tell you on Azure AD. It's not the end, my friends. Uh, Azure AD specific, I'm going to teach you further on Azure AD for AD Connect. Okay, uh, AD Connect is a technology. Uh, again, uh, the, the tool which we, we use it and we try to you know connect our on-premises Active Directory uh, will sync up with our on-premises AD user accounts groups to Azure AD. Okay, so we're going to do that later point. But uh, as I said, initially, I'm only focusing now cloud only. So I'm not going to talk on this now. Yeah. So now this is good. Let's move to the endpoint manager. So within this endpoint manager, if you want to you know reach or if you want to open Microsoft endpoint manager admin center, uh, you have to just go to endpoint.microsoft.com. That's a URL. So once you type this endpoint.microsoft.com, this is your URL name, it would take it to this page. Okay, if you don't have a permission here, it will throw an error straightforward here. You don't have, 
oops you don't have a proper licensing kind of thing will come up here okay or sorry mdm authority is not set some kind of you know error will come up okay so again i wanted to tell uh, here also you also have a customizations options my friend within endpoint manager also if you are trying to talk about the designing let's talk you know a few important points and then we'll come into the endpoint manager let's say you you got a project for implementing endpoint manager what you're going to implement you might be working with high level i'm talking not the low level you might be working with windows devices or ios ipad or mac or android devices okay so what you're going to work is you're going to work with some kind of compliance policies some kind of automated configurations to be set it and also you will be working with the patch management with intune uh, and the feature update all of that stuff you're going to work okay. maybe a bit of security policies also you're going to work on it that's good so this is at the high level of what you can do with the uh, within this configuration but it's not the enough uh, actual configuration actually endpoint manager is not just the intune console it is also console for da it's also console for your other applications so you can see here there's you know some other uh, configurations also can be viewed from within here so just you know let you know that information now uh, within endpoint manager also you have a customizations are available that needs to be customized so what are those customizations why we are talking about the customizations let's say you are uh, you you have a project now uh, and uh, you are enrolling so i didn't explain what is enrolling at this point of time think that there is an agent is getting installed let's call you know enrolling for now maybe a wrong way of explanation but or uh, think another way you have an uh, sccm some binaries on the device and that can be managed with sccm now uh, uh, with sccm then you call it as a sccm client similarly to manage that specific device you have some intune binaries and you are able to manage with intune then we call it as the enrollment just just the example that's not the right way of explaining but think that you know there's some uh, something client side uh, configuration that is actually reporting to endpoint manager but for users that are coming from windows or ios or mac or android you need to have a seamless experience uh, so for that you need to do some kind of you know, configurations that needs to be done at the first level so what are those configurations for if you just go to the tenant administration so this is the admin uh, page where you need to actually work uh, very really but very important configurations can be done so the first configuration would be the customizations and also you have the terms and conditions and the custom notifications also can be sent so now let's talk about what is this customization so we did actually customized here within the active directory but this customization within the active directory is for user logon prompt right but this customization is for a client interface i would say um, called company portal application so let me show you company uh, portal application i'm sorry uh, i can't show you right away let's say this is the application which is available on your windows store android store apple store okay or app store so on all these stores you have an application called company portal so this company portal also to, must be customized in your project reason being the company portal you need to you know, show your company logo your company branding name and the color that you wanted so that this specific interface very similar my friends if you are coming from SSM background software center right software center what happens you can customize right that the uh, color logo all of that similarly the company portal also can be customized this is the first step that i wanted to do it now uh, later point uh, we'll see how this company portal looks like when we move to the android or app uh, apple devices okay so let's customize this first so i'll just go to tenant administration customization so click on edit you can give here the company name so here my company name is uh, let's say uh, 
I'm just giving as into Patty Lab. Okay, you can choose a color. So if you remember the color was into the blue, that's a default one. You can change to the one which you want. For example, I want to do it purple and my logo of company. So earlier I have already customized my logo. If you remember the same logo I'm applying so that this is how it looks on my company portal my company portal okay now for the white background also this is the one this is how it looks like if it's coming from a white background uh, brand image again the same this is my brand image now within this come why why need to you know configure this actually you know within this portal you also have an option if you just go to the support here there is a support options will come let's say the user has a, some problem okay how can we uh, how can we ensure that the user can reach to a specific team okay so in this case let's say uh, it help desk okay they can reach so I, I'm the end user think my point of view I'm the end user I wanted to uh, install my uh, so whatever the agent or whatever you call it actually basically enrollment we call it so i want to enroll into intune uh, then i have some problem or maybe after i enrolled i have some problem for installation of some application how would i reach what team i would reach so that's where you know you need to give your contact name so i'm just giving help desk team and their phone number let's say the global help desk number so i'll just give whatever the phone number you have okay and the email address so for example help desk at land in my lab.com and the website so website name is like you know this is your team's portal let's say it help desk teams okay so they can reach this internal sharepoint portal and get the help for the knowledge base maybe and where i have the urls the website maybe internal portal again this could be you know my uh, it help desk dot then in my lab.com example if i have a you no know, sharepoint portal they can you know go here and they can you know do additional thing okay so that's it so here the privacy so in my case http call slash slash privacy statement is mandatory to you know uh, mention so you can give here a uh, privacy dot whatever html page so these things are needed so what we have done here within this page we are trying to customize the company portal application as a first step, we have not done anything within the environment manager. We're trying to change the look and feel and some of the administration uh, things. So these are the normal things uh, which we can configure. We'll come back here when we need it one more time. Okay, once we have done this customization, the most important one would be, uh, if you are coming from any of the compliance point of view, the company also have to say, uh, when you for example there's a user called uh, abc user he is trying to you know use this device which is which might be a personal device or corporate device but we need to give some kind of you know disclaimer saying that hey when you enroll or when you come back to intune or when you're using this device this device is owned by my xyz company and you must have to follow my terms and conditions that we must have to say and the user electronically he must have to sign in that and this information will be you know uh, given to uh, given to the all the uh, given to you know some kind of an auditor will come up you know in when, when you go for some kind of you know, compliance policies um, the user must have to accept the terms and conditions every one year at least 365 days must be accepted and that information we have to give it to maybe CB kind of an organization where they might you know uh, put some kind of a you know, complaints rule so that's very important so how can we achieve this we have to you know uh, configure our terms and conditions in this case okay so let's go to the terms and conditions so here i can create there's nothing terms and conditions so i'm just going to create so if you if your company coming up with a terms and conditions set then all of that information have to be put it to here so this is for 
all employees example. Now I'm putting here uh, terms and con conditions. So I have a, already a document within uh, with me, so I can use that document, or maybe uh, some part of that document I can you know show you, and some information I can put it. So basically, the terms and conditions uh, contains a two sections. If you say terms and conditions, summary of a terms. This this can term summary of terms can contain larger number. Okay, but this can be you no know, very limited uh, information will be there. So let's uh, put here. These are my terms and conditions example. So cookies, how we are going to use a licensing. Your you must be accepted. Should not be you no know, copy paste restricted. All of that personal information kind of thing reservation. These you know your company will come up with a company policies. So that information we would be. Oh, this is the very less sorry the below one summary terms are less and the above is higher so so whatever the data is there that you can you know copy and assign for the required users group so i'm just assigning for everyone in this case you can create now we have done few customizations within endpoint manager also okay so let's see let's see what we have done we have done here uh, customization for the look and feel of company portal and terms and conditions uh, these are the different notifications we, if you want you know send a separate notification we can send it uh, information but not now um, nothing here so so far uh, the customizations are ready let me uh, let me now jump into a project phase let's come up with the complete a concept with a project point of view okay now you 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 got a new project okay and your company says that you must have to implement into good uh definitely you know uh, this concept as i earlier also told we are going with the cloud later point we go with on premises with the dc and later point we will go with the sec and dc but now i'm only talking about only cloud only environment so i'll try to restrict here later point we can you know combine these topics but configuration remains almost the same and the requirement might change here and there we will work accordingly okay so let's say not every company will uh, implementing uh, in tune with all the devices that is for sure okay uh, it's a 50 50 I would say at least so every company uh, they may encourage or they may not encourage personal devices to onboard to your project they wanted to you know stop at the first initial phase or they wanted to stop uh, complete apple apple devices they don't want you know uh, users to use or maybe they don't want to use any of the android devices for the security concerns okay it depends on a company standards also but in our case we are going to learn everything but just wanted to you know talk on that point of point of view also and uh, let's see uh, let's open up uh, a small document okay this is uh, publicly also available this document and I will be sharing also this document for you um, where is that into your right so how you're gonna get it is uh, it's a project based definitely okay let's say i wanted to stop now enrollment restrictions to be applied okay uh, let's see how can i apply this enrollment restriction you see here you have an option called enrollment restrictions the this is what we are going to try so if you look it here i think you know we have taken the trial we have uh, talked about the branding customizations okay uh, we're going to try the device types uh, we're going to learn for windows then android all of that the complaints process so we go in this way but i'm talking about you know let's say let's also understand from a project point of view also right i don't want to you know talk about just the futures okay i'm also coming in from a project point of view along with the along with the step-by-step -step configuration so the step-by-step -step, my friends first uh, i'm going to explain this way i don't want to go from all devices or i don't want to go from a directly policies what I will do is 
my style of teaching is I'll go by platform. Okay, I'll go with only Windows first. Then we will go to the Android. Then we'll go to the iOS. Okay, then you go to the all devices or you click anywhere. It would be easy for you to understand within each of these within this each of the platform same category even apps also if I choose the apps also it, it remains the same thing my friends if you see here again the same thing apps also I'm going to teach in that way only okay so we'll take one by one and we'll finish but I'm uh, what I was trying to explain at this point of time is let's think from a project point of view also okay it's not that you know we are just you know learning here from a project point of view you might have a requirement to to not to onboard uh, maybe a specific type of category devices. Let's say Let me show you here. Okay. Let me show you here device restrictions example uh, If I just edit this This screen looks good for you to understand uh, Now you got a project. Okay in that project you understand that based on the project uh, requirements You understand that you know the company don't want to go for Android devices Example, so how can you block it? So you need to first design from a project point of view at the initial architecture side So this is where you have a something called a enrollment restrictions. Okay, you can put it here as a block Meaning the, if, if you just block these two things so the Android devices cannot be managed with the Intune here and uh, They don't uh, allow you to know when enroll the devices also to Intune Okay, or maybe you have uh, Android devices. Okay, you're okay to you know allow, but you don't want to allow them with a lower version of uh, Android version. Let's say you know eight and below, you don't want to allow. How can you do that? So you can do here. Oh, so let's actually you know go back and let me explain one more time what we are trying to do. Okay, uh, what we are trying to do is now let's say you got a project. Okay, and uh, based on the project requirements you found that your company or the, the client says that hey, I don't want to enroll some specific devices type of devices or Specific version that you want to you know, stop the enrollment for security reasons. Definitely. How do you do is you will just go to uh, Enrollment restrictions and you are going to configure here multiple type of uh, device restrictions can be done. I'm just taking an example here the existing policy. I'm not creating anything I'm just using the existing one and showing with the screen. So with the screen it should be clear for you to you know read uh, I request everybody to you know just you know try to read uh, on the screen it, it makes easy for you to understand along with me for example uh, if you remember in the introduction I told Android device can be managed with a two type of Flavors one would be the Android enterprise other one is a DA, right? We don't use a DA as I said many times um, in, in the beginning, right? So how can I block that we know that it's an insecure one? How can we block simply we can block here so I can choose your DA. I don't want uh, But I want Android enterprise But this should be eight and above Android versions only onboarded and maximum also you can define maybe there could be some bug on a different version that you wanted to you know stop it or maybe to start after that bug specific version you can do that here okay same thing goes for the, these are the settings for uh, for every device right for android but if you choose here you don't want the end users to enroll in end users to enroll in Intune, how can you block it from a project point of view? This is where you you're going to come up here and you will you know configure as block. Meaning, if a user uh, has uh, uh, has access for definitely he has a mobile phone and he has a company portal application, he just goes and uh, install that application. With that, he is trying to sign up. Then it can be blocked. So I didn't explain about company portal yet. You you might be you know, confusing, but that's a tool that will be using for enrollment process. Okay, your mobile devices. So in our case, uh, what we are trying to explain, uh, what we are trying to learn is here, how can I stop some kind of device version, some type of device category itself, uh, platform based? You can do it here. So this is the place you need to you know first. I have to think first place. Would we think about this? 
after you know terms and conditions or, or the customization you also have to think about the enrollment restrictions clear so from a design point of view as a security point of view you should come up with what is that you wanted to put it create here you can create here a device enrollment okay you can come up with a sheet a similar kind of you know sheet here you can say that you know uh, what type of configuration you want to you know configure let's see i wanted to say here So you can define here the required configuration within the sheet and then you you need to you know, gather also from the project requirement from the project uh, project point of view right so sometimes i would you know open this sheet to you know show you uh, the document that we need to you know uh, might need to you know fill up as part of the uh, project okay let's say these are the uh, platform specific and you want to you know uh, enable or disable okay maybe even for the uh, bring your own device also concept you want to you know, enable or disable so the similar uh, structure that we have here okay you can you know produce this in that excel sheet and ask them to you know fill as a first step okay so in my case as i initially explained that you know we don't want to go with the da so what i can do i can simply block okay so if i block it here what happened even personally owned also getting blocked same thing goes here so if i choose this the android cannot be enrolled by anybody so you might you know come up with uh, this kind of you know scenarios definitely in your project okay I i'm not changing anything here we will come back here also one more time and also by default there are you know some kind of uh, option some kind of uh, uh, limitations okay i would say limitations for any user to enroll so the limitations are if you look at here device limit so before i go here device limit my friends i wanted to take it to my azure active directory so in my azure active directory why uh, th there's a device let's see there's a user called chris my friend chris wants to use uh, maybe 10 devices he just uh, registered 10 different devices. Can this is supported by your Azure AD? First thing, why we are talking about Azure AD? Because that's the flavor. On top of it only, you have the Intune or Endpoint Manager, right? So first of all, what is the limitation that a user can enroll or register or join his machines in Azure AD? that you need to understand first that's that's the first limit the second limit is from intune what is that you are allowing how many use how many devices you are allowing so that also be uh, checked at the top level from azure ad point of view as well as from the intune point of view let's say let's go to that configuration and let me clear yeah let's go so let's go to the devices and see how uh, how this configuration reflects if you see device settings why slow my machine yeah so you see here it is it it is saying that that is a forget about in tune all of that stuff my friends please you see you have a device a user he's trying to join to azure ad can he is allowed to join it's decided by here users join the devices everybody can join do you want to really scope that project to everyone or is selected based on your azure ad group you need to come up with this plan also okay as initially then uh, think about it and also ease this users when they are trying to join do you want to you know force them to you know use the mfa you can configure and this Chris, as I said earlier, this Chris can maximum join 50 devices. You look at here, maximum number of devices of 50. Huge. So are we really talking about that flexibility is giving in Azure AD? It depends on your company. Okay. So why we are talking about Azure AD? Because on 
if the device is joined to Azure AD, we are actually going to use to enroll into Intune or Endpoint Manager or MEM, right? To come to the MEM, what we will be doing, we will be uh, reviewing these settings also as part of the project settings first. Okay, before we before we start either Windows enrollment or Android or Apple, first think about those things. Okay, and also if if you're just talking about the cloud only, okay. Uh, so if you're just talking about the cloud only, so I hope you know. You guys knows that you know Microsoft always recommends these days not to have any user as a local admin. What they wanted is they wanted uh, nobody should be a member or maybe the local admin, even the default admin account also disables as per their security standards or their recommendations, right? But we normally we we will enable or we will have some other users to be you know a part of that on um, that machine as a local admin, but during this say, let's say this machine is joined to azure ad now this chris is going to get when he is trying to log on when he try to log on uh, he's going to get a, a user level permission or admin level permission how can i manage this so these things comes under local administrators or maybe your help desk team is there Maybe Chris says that I'm the normal user icon boss, so I need help in installing something or I need to you know, click on UAC prompt or some some other thing. Then they might reach you and you should be you know, able to help uh, from a help desk point of view. So for that, you can you know add whatever the groups here, whatever the users you're going to add, they will become as a local admin on that computer so automatically. Okay, so why I was talking all this is this is also a little bit relevant. It's not directly from Intune, but it means lot when you go and troubleshoot. Okay, let's say if a user coming up more than five devices, that's a limit. You see here, enrollment restrictions. It says that all users can only enroll up to five maximum. Let me edit and show you. Okay. Okay. Now we talked about enrollment registration. Now I wanted to also now talk about the device categories. Okay, the next part is I'm talking about the device categories. What exactly device categories? A device categories are a simple uh, category. Let's say I have a sales team, or I I wanted to uh, say that if a device is a corp device, I during the enrollment process the user can select as a corporate. Or if it is belonging to bring your own device, user also can select as uh, bring your own device as a category. So it just and you know, from a user point of view, he is self declaring that, uh, or he is self choosing that specific uh, uh, category of the device. Why? Why he has to choose? Let's say there is a uh, sales team. Okay, what we do is we will send a communication that hey, sales team, when you uh, try to enroll you will be prompted you will be prompted with a category and you might get you know four or five categories out of that please select as a sales so there are four or five team members so all of them has selected sales so what is the benefit that they're gonna get it so in the back end, my friends what we do is based on this sales category we create a device collection Okay, a dynamic device collection. Whenever users try to enroll with a category called sales, that device or that user becomes part of this device collection. And then what, what is the advantage of having an AD group? You can target some applications, some configurations automatically to this group. So they get automatically everything that you push it. So that's where the groups are more powerfully used i just gave you know example only we're going to do it uh live all this so you might be you know somebody asked earlier are we just talking about theory yes at this point of time just the theory now so once i created the categories you will be seeing the live windows 10 machines so we're not so uh, long so you have your device categories 
right so this is a, a category that you can do it so simple as i said sales you have a sales team example you can create there's no user account nothing to assign just a category type just a name so i can say that here bring your own device very simple straightforward i can create one more maybe corp example so i created three different uh device categories right now we have done the uh high level of uh, verification that needs to be done for any of the engine project okay now what we are trying to do is we are trying to move to the project phase within this a windows uh specific we are going to learn we are not going to learn in between anything related to android or mac or ios we will full fledged concentrate on windows now okay so the high level of a configuration that we have done so far is applicable for any platform you talk about it any platform now it's time for us to talk on windows specific clear my friends so if somebody asks, hey, whatever we have done so far, is it a first time configuration? Yes, it's a first time configuration that needs to be done. If I want to you know, uh, configure here sales team. OK, and uh, my friends, I, just, I didn't told that you can also create groups directly from endpoint manager, even users also, which I have not told, which is the same case. So let me create a group in devices uh, from the in, uh, endpoint manager group. So here I can go ahead and create okay so here all sales team okay now instead of the assign i'm going to choose as a dynamic so here i'm going to build now query okay so device category if you see here under under query how did i came you are quite new just see i can go to the groups new group the previous groups are already there so just click on the new group and from there, it's a security group. There are you know different type, Office 365 also mailbox specific, but we are working with the security and give the group name. And in the uh, device membership, choose the dynamic device. Try to build that dynamic device query. So here in the properties, I'm choosing device category and the operator is contains or equals whatever you want, content sales team then just click on here it automatically builds that query and these are very limited uh, as and date it's limited it might grow up in future but you don't have that much of flexibility that you have it with SCCM collections dynamic queries query query based you create you know very huge but you don't have that uh, flexibility okay but Microsoft is still improving on this specific whatever the options you have you can do it okay and then save this query and click on create now we have created a, uh, a query based on a sales team category let's say if, if a user trying to enroll with the sales team what happens the device gets automatically part of the part of the sales team and later point maybe i might be you know, pushing some application here to that specific device group that's where i can use it that's where i can use it so if you want to do some kind of an automation uh, with these things you can do that i'm actually as i said i'm, I'm going to repeat this uh, specific thing if you want to learn uh, in tune easy way uh, i have my own way of telling is don't go with all devices and don't go with all 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 word go by platform Try to learn by platform only first. Once you learn all these platforms, then you can go to the all. Okay, all were just you know separated for some time because you get uh, multiple options, you get confused. Okay, so I request when you are trying to learn, go by platform. That's my recommendation and the best way to you know learn even. Okay, either it could be a device specific or it could be a applications. Go by platform. That's my recommendation so let's let me show you you know by platform we are going to learn for windows click on this windows what happens is if i go to the windows i have an option called windows enrollment this is the first step for onboarding 
or, or making configuration for uh, your Intune um, for Windows specific devices. So you have an option called enrollment. What is enrollment? It's like, you know, simple, my friend, uh, in, in Azure AD, we talk about the join or register, but in Intune, if a device is coming here and you're trying to manage, meaning we will do that enrollment, meaning we have taken a kind of, uh, uh, it's enrolled so that you can manage that device. So that's called the enrollment. So we will be using again and again the enrollment word. Okay, it's not just to the Windows, it can be any platform. Okay, so how did I went is if if are quite uh, for the first time, I've just gone to the, uh, the these steps I followed navigation devices and then by platform windows, windows and en enrollment. The same thing, my friend, also available if you just go down here in the first blade. This is called a blade actually. Okay, the, the, we we call it in the Azure world a blade. So within this blade, you also have somewhere here enrollment options. Okay, so you can also go by enrollment here, device enrollment. So if I just click on device enrollment, you can also go in this way also. So what is the difference is, as I said, I like to go by platform. If I go in this way, what happens is you have an options, multiple options. Okay, you have a multiple options. Clear? So now, the steps are same the icons are same it's just the hyperlink okay it's a hyperlink or the web page is same so i'll just go by windows platform you can also do enrollment and windows or go to windows and enrollment so the same page okay so we are gonna learn only these things for now i mean whatever is there within this the four boxes we are going to learn not the autopilot this is specific to the autopilot we will be learning later point okay don't uh, be in a hurry to know learn this let's actually understand the basic thing and then we'll move to the autopilot my friends okay first thing first uh, you have here by platform windows windows enrollment and here you have an automatic enrollment let's understand what what it is actually as the name or the description says that configure windows devices to enroll when they join or register with azure active directory meaning if a device comes here some somehow by azure ad join or register whatever it happens here then what is happening we are running some option something to make the device to enroll into Microsoft Intune or Endpoint Manager. That's what we are trying to do. And that configuration can be done from here. So just click on this. Okay, now you have two options. So here, if I choose MDM scope for none, meaning it is not enabled, meaning if I have a Windows 10 device, I cannot enroll the device. That means, well, the reason being it is configured as none. Okay, if you wanna restrict, you might have been, you know, uh, accepted a project. So how do you do? You can't open for everyone, my friends. So what you do is you would actually create a group for pilot, okay? And you make that five or 10 users uh, for test, test users or you consider as a pilot users. And uh, that user group, you would be, you know, targeting. Okay, so for that, I'll just say some. I'll say I have all Intune specific pilot users here, or maybe my sales team is participating in the uh, Intune project for testing. I would, you know, select like this, that specific. So whoever part of these two user groups can only enroll, what is a platform? Windows. Okay, they can enroll in Windows platform if the persons are part of this, any of these two groups. Okay, so this is how you pilot. Pilot testing, how do you do? You, you simply first scope this MDM user scope to limited groups initially. Later point, you can, you know, increase this. You can, you know, add multiple groups. There's no problem. Okay, so in our case, if we want to allow for all, what would happen? If I set it all now, any user can enroll to this Windows 10, but the user should also have the Intune license. 
right if not his device cannot enroll that's a basic thing so if you are looking from a troubleshooting point of view till this point of time you need to you know think in this way the troubleshooting will be done from azure ad point of view not from intune point of view if you can you know understand because everything we are depending on azure ad right so the first device has to register in azure ad and later point the user should have a license from azure ad again the licensing also will be assigned and then he can enroll so for enrolling these urls uh, should be you no know, allowed within your firewall mostly you know it will be allowed in most of the companies because these are microsoft specific in case if you are coming from a pharmaceutical companies or different financial companies you might you know get blocked in that situation you know a few other urls are there that also needs to be allowed as per the documentation in a firewall okay so these things will come a uh, later point and uh, ma'am is we are not going to work on this a uh, lot if you configure both the things it might you know get uh, conflicted also we are not going to work on this now so simply we'll go in a easiest method first now with the all and say save so now what we have done we have enabled anybody can anybody when i say anybody any windows any user who can enroll to intune with all configuration if the provider the user have a intune license clear now let's uh so we, we we enable the configuration so the first thing my friends understand in this way we we actually uh, configure the uh, restrictions right enrollment restrictions we configured earlier so here we said that as a project plan we are enabling windows devices this set as first step and second step is we are configuring windows enrollment automatic okay so let's say automatic is not going to work for uh, every case actually if you don't have a p1 kind of you know, license you might have to you know end up by creating some other or dna specific records Okay, this is just you know resolve the specific uh, Intune specific records. Like you know, you know, right? Office 365. In in the past, what we used to do is we have to configure not the Office 365, but with uh, if you ever work with the Exchange servers, you need to mention the your MX record specific host name and the SNTP server, all of that stuff, right? But later point when Microsoft come up with the auto discovery technology, what happened is if you have a proper DNS record configured with the auto discovery, then it will automatically detect and it will configure the email account for you. You don't need to do any additional settings other than inputting the user ID, right? I've just taken exchange as example. Same thing applies here also. For some, uh, for some licenses, you might have to end up with uh, additional uh, configuration also you need to you know do it okay so this is into the licensing side okay but in general with the automatic enrollment uh, you have you know e3 e5 then it works now let's go to the next configuration within the uh, windows again i'm trying to navigate from devices by platform windows the first one would be the we have configured enrollment already now if you see here there's no devices but there we need to configure a few things here the first one is windows policies so within this windows policies blade you have an option for complaints policy and the profiles so i'm going to talk on that too first so my friend uh you have a device let's say this device is trying to enroll into intune okay who knows this device might not have antivirus firewall is turned off it's not it does not have a bit locker uh, it, it does not have a password is set so these are you know common vulnerable things because of this machine is compromised let's say this compromised machine if this user is trying to access someone's secured machine the hackers or maybe the vulnerability might use based on this machine a token or 
based on this it might you know affect other machines also who knows or this machine completely gets affected also so what we need to do is as a company point of view we need to come up with a complaints policies that's a first step what is a complaints policy so let's uh, the complaints policy has maybe you know close to you know 50 60 or 100 set tanks that needs to be uh, configured so i'm just going to talk about the complaints policy settings only quickly i'm not going to show you now or not uh, showing now how to do that uh, ignore these steps for now my friends please you have some settings so what are those settings let's see your device must be enabled with a bit locker so that the machine is fully encrypted and must be a secure boot so the device should have a code integrity if you ask you know some some of them you may be you know, no code integrity some of them may not know so this is a kernel specific so when it's booting the kernel the code also will validate it during the booting phase so that also should be you know one of the security check that needs to be done on those devices so these things they are going to measure under device health or you can say hey i don't want to allow windows uh maybe uh, 1809 machines example i don't want to allow them because they might not be you know uh, i feel that because these this is already support is ended example and you don't want to allow so you can you know say that minimum is 1909 you can set such con configurations so that the devices when they are trying to enroll are post to the enrollment also these checks will be validated so what happens after the validation let's say we found that this device is not uh, have a bit locker not have maybe a specific version which you define 1909 but it has only 1809 what happens so my friends, uh, Intune has uh, Intune closely works with Azure AD also, right? So you can say that with the Azure AD, you can block the access. What kind of inner blocking? You can say that do not allow the user to browse SharePoint portals like OneDrive or emails, or do not allow him to you know connect to some cloud applications. So you can you know enforce such kind of you know compliance policy can be configured. That's one example. What is other example? Let's say this user not uh, 1909 is not there. So what you can do is you can send a automated template, an email here. Uh, if you see here actions for non-compliant users, you can send an automated email to help desk saying that this specific user does not have 1909. One email goes or other email can go to end user saying that hey you must have to follow this knowledge kb article which i'm sending or maybe uh, steps that i'm sending in this email to you know turn on firewall or upgrade uh, to latest build then only you can you know come and we will be you know, enabling the access to these services you can do uh, such kind of you know configuration okay so I just talked about the two of them, but you know, you have uh, another options. Let's see if you are talking about the co-management, right? So you can say that, hey, the device also should have the SCSIM client agent and uh, that must be a complaint, right? We, we talked about uh, we talked about the uh, complaints policies from only Intune, but what about uh, from SCSIM? SCSIM also has, as I said earlier, that has its own baselines, right? So that baseline must be in a complaint that is needed. Example, you can configure based on your business cases. This all about the business cases. Now, similarly, um, and if somebody asked that it's a theory, right? Yes, it's a theory, my friend. Now I want you to cover as a theory this, and then we will configure what we wanted to configure. Okay. So I just wanted to explain all the basic uh, theory for complaints policies. Then we will go and configure the required policies and also we'll talk about uh, project point of view also so system security yeah for the system security which talks about the password complaints policies is the windows device should have a password yes and what is a password length it should be you can define here and also you can see the encryption 
the storage you can do firewall should be turned on and atp or tpm or antivirus and spyware defender that specific configurations also including the real-time protection defender these things you can configure from a security point of view so when we talk about the security what did we talk we talked about the firewall we talked about the login uh, user id password settings and encryption we talked about tpm levels we talked about antivirus anti-spam and um, defender these settings we talked about it okay and let's talk the last one which is defender for endpoint if you have already configured defender what is that rule this is you know high or low if you ask you know what is this this is a based on the score which will be automatically uh, available if you work with the defender you know what is that value of high low medium if you've never worked with that defender specific rule then you never know that so it all depends on your company if you are using endpoint a defender then you come to know that specific scoring okay so these are the compliances so let's go back to the actual topic what we are trying to talk we talked about by platform enrollment option we enable the automatic enrollment here and later point we discussed that under management uh, under this blade called windows uh, windows blade for windows policies we need to talk about the complaints policies so what is a complaints policy now you now you know that a device should have maybe a password or maybe encryption or maybe a firewall so these things you would be validating as a compliance before the device is getting enrolled or post to the enrollment also you can validate let's say the device when it is enrolled everything is fine but the user changed the settings and now it becomes as a non compliant yes it can be the situation in that case you have an automated templates to send an email or uh, work on that specific things okay so this is all about the complaints policies now you might be you know getting if you're quite new to the intune you might getting hey am i talking about the firewall should be enabled automatically no what we're trying to do is here we are validating if a firewall is turned on or not we're just checking the status whether it's a firewall is on or off that's what we are trying to do here we're not forcing to configure the firewall settings or we are not forcing that hey uh, we, of course we are saying that you know you should have the complaints if the, if it, the device is non-complaint we will be you know alerting saying that hey this device is non-complaint and we are sending that email automated email or whatever it is but are we forcing to do the job automatically no in a complaints policy we are not forcing we will just monitor whether that defender setting is there or not like real-time on option is there or not firewall is turned on or not or the password is set with the six digit or six alphanumerical complex just we are getting to know the complaints level of that machine that's what we are trying to do okay now you should or you, you should get an idea that hey is there any other option that where i can push it to do this uh, firewall to be you know, automatically configured or bit locker to be or I have to you know, force my users to you know, change the password to six digit character. Yes, my friends, you have an option that's called the configuration profiles. Okay, so we were talking about two things now. On a Windows device, one is the compliance policies. Other one is configuration profiles. So complaints policies will monitor. It just the monitor and it will let you know what is the status configuration profiles will automate the some kind of you know configuration let's say i have a user this specific user maybe travel with his laptop to his base location maybe in uh, germany uh, from here to he might be you know uh, traveling to colono different site altogether in germany maybe somewhere else example so then this device should connect to this location's wi-fi how this happens with the configuration profiles so you need to you know configure the profile for this device maybe or maybe uh, bitlocker 
you want to enable the BitLocker. We know that a BitLocker is very important, right? So how can I enable BitLocker forcefully? You can do it from a configuration profile. Now I'm taking out of the box things also. Let's say in my on premises, I have a multiple group policies. Now I'm now you can ask me that, you know, you're saying that a cloud only topic, right? You're talking about only in tune. You have only a uh, few devices they are just joining to Azure AD and on top of that you are using endpoint manage to manage that's true so how can i ensure that these devices bitlocker to be enabled or some automated configuration to be configured or group policies in my in case if i have a on premises i might can be you know set some kind of in you know, a group policies to ensure some restrictions can be applied hey my friend can i have this option directly from a microsoft intune yes my friend that's there that's nothing but your configuration profile so 90 percent or 99 percent of what of the group policies as and date or the, that can be done directly from a configuration profile so uh, if you ask me if you ask me you said earlier i just shown this but why i'm not showing this because this will consist of more than ten thousand or maybe hundred and thousand settings are there so bigger challenges when you go for a project phase you need to gather what is that requirement what is that configuration you need to you know configure you need to you know put into the right excel sheet right way and then configure that specific settings uh properly test it and and configure it clear so i took some time to explain the same thing again and again i repeat it in a multiple ways i know so let's do a quick creation of a complaints policy and configuration profile before that uh let's let's also do the project po point of view okay so we were talking about uh, now this is a windows right we are talking about the complaints policy so within the complaints policy uh, we're talking about only windows so there are you know few uh, settings that we have shown like you know password complexity all of that so within this sheet you can you know uh, put it like you know bitlocker configuration we talked about under device health and uh, under atp uh, specific settings if you have some of them like that we have you not know, talked on it so in a project phase what you have to do is you have to come up here so you don't go and configure you know as a blindly first put it in this document very similar kind of a you know, document and that configuration what you wanted to measure by taking uh, the checks and uh, the information later point you can configure it Okay, same thing goes for the configuration profile also. Uh, this document is not up to date uh, for configuration profiles. Um, com configuration profiles, as I said, it's not just a one or two. This is more than 10,000 to one lakh. One lakh different settings are there. So it's a hard. So let's go to this uh, first one, complaints policies. Let's create a simple policy. So what you can do is just go to devices. By platform, Windows, Windows policies, complaints policies. This is how you can navigate. Can I navigate and navigate in other way? Yes, my friend. Go to devices. The confusing one is complaints policies from here. So when you go here, it can be for any of these platform. So that's what I am saying. If you're trying to learn, just come up here for a few days. Once you learn, you can go here. You know, you know what option we are referring. So just go to the configuration profile, create a configuration profile, bear with me for five, 10 minutes, then you get it what you're trying to, you know, uh, get it out of me. So here you have an option for Windows 10 and there are two options you're getting. So this May uh, 10th, you have this option called settings catalog. This is one of the breakthrough which was introduced in the recent uh, time by microsoft okay why i'm calling this as a breakthrough is because with this you have all the group policies okay in the past we used to go with only templates okay let me uh, first go with this and show you the group policy settings and then i'll come back to the templates and within the templates also some settings will not be there then how can i do how can we configure like uh, some configuration might not be there what I can do so I'm gonna address that in this stage, but I'm at this stage now 
Okay, so at this stage, uh, you, I, as I said, is one of the breakthrough, uh, and with this configuration, it made our life so easy, really so easy, in terms of the managing the group policies. Okay, let's check what it is. So let's click on settings and catalog, create. I'm not going to create anything, but I will be showing you what we have. So if I just click on add and look at my friends here, the way we see here is very similar to the group policies. If you just open up your group policy, you have this administrative templates, control panel, desktop, right? So whatever you have the components, all of that group, policy, same settings are there. If you ask me, all the group policy settings are there? No. But majority is there. Okay, when I say majority, what is that percentage? Anyway, from 98 to 99 percentage of the settings are available in this. Okay, now you should have a question. Uh, hey, I've been running all these days in my on premises with 10 different group policies. Each one consists of maybe a 10 different settings or 20 or 50 altogether. I might be you know, ending up with maybe anywhere 100 to 500 different settings. Boss, I wanted to migrate because I, I don't want to you know, apply the group policies anymore or maybe my infrastructure is migrating to cloud. I wanted to manage everything from Microsoft Endpoint Manager. How can I do that? So yes, you can do that. Um, the first thing is you have an option to analyze all the group policies. So you just have to save the group policies in a XML format. Okay, and then you can you know import here. Uh, if I can go from here, let me show in another tab, sorry. So here you have a group policies analytic. Okay, so here what you can do is you can simply import that group policy that you have. For example, I hope I have some policy on my desktop. If not, I can't show you this now, but we'll be doing it later point. Yeah, something is coming. No, not this. So I really don't know where it is, but I have the group policy in case if I have that uh, XML format file, what I can do is I can actually uh, take the GPO and look at what are the settings are available. As I said earlier, when I was explaining what is the percentage, I said 98 to maybe anywhere 99 percentage of the settings are available. Whatever the settings are not available, it will list here when you, you know, when you do this, where is that? Did I close that? The group policies one? Yeah, I think I closed it. But you know, if you import that group policy to group policy analytics one, you would actually get it. Uh, and it will tell you, you know, this specific setting is not there. The specific setting is available. And also it will tell you here uh, how to navigate that also. So that's a one best uh, tool for migration your group policies. Okay. Now I did talked about this category. Okay. Anybody has on this category any doubt. So this has everything almost. Okay. Now we're going to talk about another type of group policy with the templates. Let's say here templates. Now within this template, now you have a multiple options. The first option which I wanted to show you is administrative templates. So let's create one, test one. If you see here, you have the similar one. Let's say you got a control panel. If you remember, we just uh, coming back from previous uh, previous catalog, very similar, right? This is also a group policy, right? Windows components, I'm into the computer configuration. Windows components, very similar, right, my friends? So like I can do the, uh, I can do the, Devo de delivery optimization or maybe some other policy bit locker specific or all that configuration is already available. So meaning whatever you have earlier viewed from settings catalog is also available under templates 
administrative template. I think my screen was slow. So what I was trying to explain is whatever you have under settings catalogs also available under administrative templates. If you ask me what is the difference and also I said it's a breakthrough because here you have a multiple options. You have more settings than administrative templates here. So sooner or later this gets migrated to here. That's the ultimate thing and that's why you have a preview. Okay, now, so we talked about the group policies, but you know, what about other settings? So these are the VPN, Wi-Fi specific settings. Let's say some XYZ setting is not available, my friend. Can you tell me what kind of you know, settings that? Let's see, I wanted to disable insecure uh, application, one of the application called Internet Explorer. I don't want to allow anybody to use the Internet Explorer. How do I do that? I don't have a group policy. Right, so what I'll do is I'll reach either Internet Explorer specific community. That's how I do it. Okay, I'm 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 very open to you know explain how I would do that. I would you know go to either a forum, technical kind of you know forum, or I'll reach the principal vendor of that product because we paid that application, right? And I'll ask them that settings to you know. Uh, the settings like uh, I wanted to disable now Internet Explorer, right? So let's go to the custom and then I'll say IE specific disable. I'll ask that settings to be you no know, give here. So they would, you know, as a hardware vendor or the application vendor, they actually gives that specific settings to us. And then that specific settings can be applied to disable or enable that functionality. Okay, same thing goes even if you uh, somebody was talking about the um, ESP page, right? So th there's a small bug in that ESP page when you're trying to do even for autopilot also. So to stop that uh, bug, we actually come up here and create that uh, specific settings also during the autopilot. In fact, that being said, I'll end up here with the okay. part one and uh, part two would be the next lecture. Please check out in the description and click on that so that you would be you not know, directing to the part two.